Well, hello everyone, and welcome to a very another Wizard Wednesday. Hi! Hello everyone. And today, who do I have with us, CT? Uh, me. It's CT. <laughs> Yay, we! Yay, we! Yay! Yay. Yay. And everyone's clapping, jumping, and cheering for our flawless introduction. One thing I'll Yay. note about um, all of our all of our stream planning that we always do, the only thing we ever seem to um, mess up is the time orb. <laughs> it oh seems like it seems like there's a mild difference between how we view it. <laughs> I I in my defense today was extra extra evil and fucked up. <laughs> And, uh, uh, there was a Slender Man, there was a Jeff the Killer, there was other things. There was Slender Man, there was Jeff the Killer, there was the third one too. But because Yay. CT loves to help you all so much and teach you about crucial things, it uh, CT is here regardless. Yay. They have defeated Yay. the Slender Man. They have defeated the Jeff. They have killed the third thing violently. And it's badass to do that. Aw, okay, bud, thank you. Three year, that's gotta mean something magical, right? I uh, okay. CT, first question of the night. Uh, what's the uh, what's the meaning of the number three? Oh shit, there's a lot of magical meanings for the number three. Okay. Like I mean, honestly, it depends. It's one of those questions where it's like, it depends on what person you're asking in what era. Oh, Whoa. Hello. What's hello? What's the uh, clop in every pony? Hope we're not live. We are live. Welcome we to are the stream. Live. That's awesome. Uh, it's are okay. That's that's probably not banned by Twitch TOS, so don't worry about it. They don't know what I that means. It's fine. Say a word. Yay. We. <laughs> Holy shit. Welcome uh, to the stream, Riley, who is a a fellow wizard with CT. Would hey. you like to introduce yourself to the chat? Um, my name is Riley. I sometimes do things. Um, you might know me as Red Nines on Tumblr. Hell. Yay! Well, okay. So, so for those of you who've been privy to our wizard streams before, you know, you know Riley. If you're part of a you're part of a cult Tumblr, you probably know me and Riley and have seen us interact before. Um. So I have I have this this nice fancy tarot deck coming out soon, kind of doing this to promote that, and to promote that, we wanted to uh, we wanted to do something entertaining for y'all. So Riley and I are both extremely autistic about the the history of tarot, and James knows basically nothing about it. Zero. So so for for the the course of this stream, the goal here is going to be to teach James everything that we can about the symbology of the tarot. Uh, originally, we had, uh, I had a bunch of like lesson plans and shit that I wanted to write for this, but it's been a weird week, so we're just gonna ramble at each other and it's gonna be awesome. Yay! Come on, everybody, do the ramble hop. Yippee! We. Oui. Meine Mama hat mir einfach erlaubt, dass ich tarot lecture darf. Jetzt suche ich Book of Thoth. And twin <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Yippee! I cloth and leaven. Garbo Pal says, you just make up shit instead. No. CT and Riley do not make up shit. They, they are <laughs> both credible sources on all this card um, magic things that I hear about. What we have in tarot is a, is a, is a scaffolding, a language for making up shit. Truly. <laughs> like, like... As we get deeper into like the philosophy, if you learn tarot, of... mm -hmm. you'll get better at making shit up. Literally, no. As we get deeper into the philosophy of like tarot symbology, you're like one of the one of the sort of more advanced rules of this type of magic is if you did it wrong, no, you didn't. <laughs> it's 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 half okay. A question wait, of... no, CT. Yeah, I'm. I I have opinions, and so I do think there are wrong ways. I think kitten decks are not things you should read with um, if you're doing, <laughs> yeah, you know, I have a piece. Yeah, yeah. I have thoughts about some stuff. What is a kitten deck? 
Uh, there's just a lot of, like, gimmick tarot. Like, oh, this is the uh, sexy firefighters tarot. This is the kitten uh, tarot. This tarot is all made of cheese. Oh, you know. And a lot of times... Gift shop, like, gift shop type shit, you know? Like, yeah. It's not something, like, serious that you really want to, like, put your uh, kind of mental and spiritual development into, if that makes any sense. It's not something that you want to... It's like a cartoon drawing of Jesus versus like an actual like golden effigy of Jesus on the cross or something. It's like one of them's definitely more serious than the other. Well, yeah, and like if you're trying to like self develop instead of like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like 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 those things might be fun for like you know you want ideas for an artistic project about cats and you want to like think about how the cats are feeling and you pull a cat tarot, but I like. In your like life, if you're like wondering about something and you want to use the tarot to think through it, um, you know, there's rules in my brain. I think that, the, like, if you talk to someone about who, who's who's really into tarot long enough, they're gonna like be like, "No, you're not allowed to do that." Not <laughs> not because of any like rules outside in the world that exist, but because it's going to upset me personally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like I just think that's kind of stupid. Um, yeah. There's a lot as of those. We, and as we get into this, do, go like, ahead. as we get into this, as we get into this, it's going to be like the like James. I don't. I'm not sure. And James and audience, as our audience stand in here, there mm -hmm. is a shocking amount of depth to this tarot symbology that I don't think like 90% of people are aware of. Like before the, the stream started, I had to shut CT down because they already fascinated me, and I was like, no, 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 you have to stop talking because okay. you've said something I have to take notes on, and the stream hasn't even started yet. Yeah, yeah. So actually, that's probably a good place to start. Um, so, James, if you want to bring up your little draw pad for us. Well, um, wait, okay, before screen. we before we start, I have I have to say I just I randomly opened a book of uh, a book of uh, correspondences like alphabetized like magical correspondences and um, mm -hmm. old men are Saturn. Um, uh, older brothers are also Saturn. Mm -hmm. um, Olive is uh, uh, Jupiter and Venus and also Olive tree is Jupiter and Saturn. And onion is the sun, and the moon, and Mars, depending on who you want to cite. Anyway, that's all. I, I, the, yeah. I, I had to get that out. It, it has nothing to do with anything. I just, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah did you get I, all that? I saw, I saw onion be three different planets, and I'm like, I have to tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of them. Onion represents these three things, and they also don't represent these three things at any given time or any combination of the two. Welcome to learning occult history. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> it's like, like, what is this? Or who are you asking? Who is asking? What is... Yeah, it's like... Asked? And then and then 20 minutes later, once you figured out who's asking and why you're asking and what you're trying to do with it, you're like, oh, oh, actually, that's profound and crazy. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Or, or, like, we've narrowed it down to three mutually contradictory answers. <laughs> yeah. So, so in terms of place, how, how would you... So, okay, let me ask you this, Riley. Like, let me put you in the hot uh -oh. seat for a second. Um, Yippee. If you, if you were to introduce someone to tarot symbology, where would you start? Um, with uh, the Thoth and the Rider White Smith, and then just talking about... I would kind of bust out a tree of life and start kind of uh, bebop at it, scat it at them. Why don't okay? Why don't we start with the um? Why don't we start with the the rider weight? And okay, a, and, and by a, tree of life, I also mean that and the four worlds and the like astrological correspondence. Yeah, you know yeah what I'm we'll talking about. we'll get there. We'll get there. I, I'm not even sure if we'll have time to cover that on stream. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, you can cover it in a few sentences, and then like people will be like, "What the fuck does that mean?" And we'll yeah, I know. <laughs> That's it over what time. I mean. <laughs> so, so okay. Why don't we start with something that our our, our artist friend James here can can understand? Why don't we start with hermetic color symbology? I love colors. I love hey. colors. Um, uh, 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 we're doing. There's there's so much of it. Here, <laughs> all the... right, all right. Where do I Let's... start, CT? I have Let's... a. I have a. I can I can talk about the Golden Dawn color correspondences, or we could talk about color like pre, 
them, Calvary, which I don't I know enough to, about. I happen to have my my Rider Waite Smith deck right here. Let me shuffle it and pull a card. Beast. Chat, place your bets. Um, it's going to be a court card, and it's going to be a sword. Okay, let's see. I think there's going to be a moon on it. I'm just saying uh, things. Let's see. We have the Page of Cups. Okay. Well, right. I'm never going to be right again, and I was wrong yeah, now, so you should yeah, just not listen to anything I say. Product cultist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here. Let me get you a picture of the Page of Cups. <gasps> And then we can just we can just start dissecting this bad boy. Okay, I get to see a cup, chat. Also, yeah. if I I apologize if I sound a little erratic or make noise. I just arrived home from a ten-hour factory job. So, if you'll like, forgive yeah. me. I'm gonna mute a take second a, and like set my breather. desk up and see how I sound on my computer and all of that. Yeah, yeah. No, take take a breather. Hello, chat. I, I know that was probably a lot right off the bat here, but <laughs> uh, it will all make it. That's part of how it works with magic. You dive in head first, and then you kind of find your way from there. So let me let me upload this thing for you, if it will let show it to me. Please. Why isn't it a page of Pokemon creatures? We already <laughs> went over gimmick tarot and how it doesn't have any power. Or does it? <laughs> Not like the, in my opinion, and this could be easily contradicted by any number of occultists. In my opinion, the the real power of a tarot deck is in the the sheer density of its correspondences and and symbolism. Right, every single element of the Raider Waite Smith deck is dripping with intentionality and symbolism that have been added to and compounded and written about by generations of occultists like this is is one of the most pondered things in all of western occultism there are there are so many different interpretations and like versions of like ways of thinking about this that you can find throughout occult history and they all mean something to someone so here in the stream chat i have i have posted your image of the page of cups okay okay oh Oh, it's the Page of Cups. It's the right, Page of chat. Cups. Give me a second while I download our brand new friend, the Page of Cups. Get... Oh my god. Chat, my entire Discord just exploded for a second. Okay. I accidentally opened the golf. I'm so <laughs> fucking sorry, guys. <laughs> Welcome to the golf stream. You opened golf and it shut off my Discord somehow. <laughs> You're fine. Oh no. You're fine. All right, let's see. Uh-oh. Huh. Well, it went away again, chat. That's not what Discord's supposed to do. Well, that time it wasn't my fault, so okay. you can't blame me for the first one now either. I'm I'm back to blaming the Page of Cups, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's Women, am I right? <laughs> it, f the Page is male. Um, not for long. What do, you, what do you mean? Fair, fair enough. What do you think is in that cup? Ah. It's actually uh, pregnant mare's urine, and uh, it's a Scythian priestess. Okay. I, I believe I believe in the original Rider Waite Smith. There's a fish in the cup. It does look like that's a fish. Um, yeah, fish is a symbol for serving fishy realness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do I have to add that to the notes? <laughs> you don't have to add that to the notes. So, okay. So, okay. Uh, just, just from, 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 some basics here, right? So, the sky is gray. That means something. He's standing on a beach. That means something. His tunic is light blue. That means something. His sleeves are pink. That, like, all of this, all of these things are meaningful. Hmm. I also have in front of me. A copy of Arthur Edward Waite's Pictorial Key to the Tarot. I gave my copy to a partner, and so now I don't have that with me. Oh, well, good, because I have one, actually. Based. Don't even worry. I'm glad that one of us has the Arthur White. Because that, that's like an indispensable resource in like oh, yeah, kind it's... of parsing a lot of the symbolism. Like, the like three... 
I guess four like contemporary books. Oh, I can hear myself echoing on stream. I got to turn off stream. Uh, the, like three contemporary, not contemporary, three like old books and then like one contemporary book. Like if you're trying to like get like a solid foundation in the tarot, like the um, the Papu like treatise on tarot from uh, the guy who like started Martinism or one of the guys who started Martinism. Um, and uh, he goes through, he gives a lot of bad history, but like the symbol, the symbology is like really foundational to a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's Arthur White, uh, who basically kind of like, you know, the Golden Dawn modernized tarot, but like particularly Arthur Edward White. Oh, God damn it. Coleman Smith. Riley, I'm, I'm reading the, the <laughs> did you know about this description from the, the pictorial key to the tarot? What are you talking about? A fair, pleasing, somewhat effeminate page of studious and intent aspect, uh, uh, intent and aspect contemplates a fish rising from a cup to look at him. See, I have just, I have permanent access to the Akashic record. I can just like <laughs> see through time and I know what I'm saying anytime I say something. Confirmed tarot femboy, I guess. Let's go. <laughs> Let's Proof go. Of... It is Proof the... of femboy confirmed. It is the literally the finster of the, of the tarot. <laughs> it is the pictures of the mind taking form, divinatory meanings. A fair young man, one impelled to render service with whom the querent will be connected. A studious youth, news, message, application, reflection, meditation. Also, these things directed to business, reversed, taste, inclination, attachment, seduction, deception, and artifice. He's a sub, a slut, and a hustler. Let's Indeed. Go. <laughs> so, I love, I love the the, the, the the like court cards because it just sounds like they're reading someone to filth, like right when they describe the cards. Um. Uh, I'm gonna think like, 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 have you ever read the? Uh, have you ever read like Crowley's descriptions of the court cards before? No, I don't think I have. Oh really? Okay. Because if I have, I don't remember them. Um, well, I'm not going to read the whole book of Thoth, but like, don't worry about they're it. They're funny. Please? Some of them can be really silly. <laughs> so, so, okay, okay. I know that generally in the Hermetics, in the, with the Hermetic color symbology, the, um, like blue is generally associated with like the intellectual. It's, it's the mind, the subconscious, things like that. Like, actually, if we... One of my favorite pieces of symbology in the entire tarot is uh, the the Raider Waite Smith's moon card because it has a lobster coming out of the the sea at the bottom and it, it yeah. literally represents the subconscious. Like part of why it pisses me off when people I, I, Jordan like, fucking Peterson. Oh my god! Literally, <laughs> no, actually, like <laughs> it's it's really yeah. I think it's it, it is kind of fitting because he is my he is my subconscious. He is everything that like. What does the I'm fighting? I, what does the gray, pale, dirt, concrete sky mean? Um, that was, that is important, and I don't remember. Is you have the, uh, pictorial key. Does it ha make a note on the, uh, the gray, uh, background, like, skies? Because, like, there's... Color, which it is... It shows up in, you know, it shows up in, uh, like, the suit of pentacles and swords a lot. Um, uh, Five of Cups has it. King of Cups has it. Um, three of Heart, uh, Three of Swords has it. Uh, like it's 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 generally like a kind of like melancholic thing. Like I, one of the things I like about the color is it allows you to kind of like intuit the 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 kind of feel. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, okay. whether the background sky is like yellow or blue or gray. Um, oh. So the or cloudy, like the clouds, each have like a meaning that I. That, it's been so long since I studied the white, and I, I, I also meant to study it more this week, but like, I've had Yay. an insane, an insane <laughs> week. I'm sorry. Oh my god, same. Like I was planning on being so much more prepared for this, so we're just gonna we're firing from the hip here. So okay, um, I know that the beach, like the fact that the page of cups is standing on a beach, like whenever you see a a tarot character standing on. A precipice like that it means that you're like on the verge of something like which is pretty pretty easy to intuit right you know it's the the boundary it's, between land and the earth it's it's liminal in a non-tiktok meaning of that word yeah uh, 
Uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's on the edges or peripheries of things. Um, the transient, uh, yeah. like kind of. Yeah, which even potentiality. He's uh he's looking at a fish in the cup, which is like a thing from the sea, and he's standing on the land, and so there's like there's some. It, it goes with the symbology of like the the something is about to break, something is about to emerge from that that like creative intellectual sea. <laughs> this is the page. His job is beach. His his job is beach. <laughs> See, okay, th uh, Ina Exe in chat. You said like the pink represents gay. That's like not entirely wrong for Raider weight symbology. It's like red is like white is purity and red is passion. So mm. the combination of them does actually kind of point towards something along those lines. Okay, so a little bit fruity. A little bit fruity, yeah, but like passionately fruity. Okay, so maybe it's something... Like passion fruit. Okay. Indeed. So the, the character Sorry. is very colorful, but the horrible world around them is very, like, terrible melancholic. Okay. Ah, good, I'm starting good to see there. something. Yeah, yeah. There's, like... From what I understand, like, it should be, like, creative potential, like, uh, or, like, like, like a potential of, like, an emotional, like, connection. Yeah, yeah. It, it says here, A fair young man, one impelled to render service with whom the querent will be connected. So it's like, you're going to meet somebody who can do something you need. Hmm... Okay. So Why don't we? I'm always meeting people who can do something I need. We live in a society. <laughs> Money can be exchanged for goods and services. Let me let me find myself. So okay, okay. In talking about the broader structure of uh of the tarot, let's go to the next like the directly next card. Let's go to the Knight of Cups. Well, depends on what deck you're using. Let's stick with the Raider White Smith <laughs> for now, and then eventually we can get into the Thoth deck because doing a compare and contrast there is like I think a really good exercise. It is. Uh, I love that you knew exactly where I was going with that. And I'm I'm setting it up because because we're clever wow. like that, and we totally planned this stream. It's actually <laughs> an elaborate um, uh, it's setup. A double for, bluff. Uh, yeah. All right, so here, here's your next card, Jane. Okay. So so just based on what we, we were just talking about, I want you to see if you can't puzzle out some of the meaning behind the Knight, the knight of Cups. Sure, sure. Give me a second. I'm going to go grab this card, and if I, if I drop from Discord, then the Knight of Cups has slain me. Save image. Okay. In the, in the Philosopher's Cups. Tarot deck, the Knight of Cups is James Baldwin. Um... Dope. Well, okay, let me tell you. The next card is uh, Queen of Cups, which is Hildegard von Bingen. Interesting. And then the King of Cups is Walter Benjamin. Yeah, let's go. You need this deck, CT. By the way, it like it's so dope good. As hell. Those are like... It's like uh, yeah, it's like a parody cool. of the Rider White Smith. So a lot of the original like art and colors stay there, but like, you know, like, uh, the um. Seven of Swords has to do with Max Sterner. Uh, Antonin Artaud is the fool. Felix Guattari is the magician. Uh, Karl cool. Marx is the hierophant. It's so good. That's um, fun. All uh, right, all right. So, uh, so Jame, what what can you puzzle out about this this card right here? I th okay. So blue sky. I'm gonna think that the color of the sky sort of means like an environment. That sort of symbolic partially mm -hmm. in the background maybe of like oh i don't i don't want to say adventure i i it's not an adventure it doesn't seem like an adventure card it seems like uh maybe mm -hmm. a journey something about the horizon maybe because it's sort of a, a mountainous place with a river not really looking like a place with towns castles or a place to keep a horse so i think this guy is on a journey going somewhere I okay. 
I do love that you're looking at like the environment already. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The horse is in a very noble pose, I would say. It is a it is posing for the camera, which is to say the artist. Mm. I think that it's almost like a structured journey, I think, is is my uh, interpretation of this. You are going to go on a journey that is both good to do and safe. You're gonna go I mean, on a business trip, and it's gonna you... be awesome. Look at look at his armor. What does his armor, his dress, tell you? Oh oh shit! Red fish. Ah, uh, yeah. There's a fish He's in a... this one too. He's Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Connection. Game theory. Hmm. Game theory. I. But that's just a theory. Okay, I'm struggling to remember what the fish meant other than that's effeminate. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. I want I want to say, James, you did a damn good job. Hell yeah. So here, here's the description from the uh, the pictorial key. Graceful, but not warlike. Riding quietly, wearing oh, a winged helmet. Irresistible donut-style tree. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Irresistible donut-style <laughs> tree? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Sorry, uh, my speaker has a radio built in. And I was <laughs> switching to my mic, trying to turn on my speaker, so I had three people, and I pressed the turn off auxiliary button and turned on the radio. So I don't know how much of that you heard. But I, I Riley, Riley. Yeah. All we, all we heard was like you went quiet, and then we just heard irresistible donut style tree. And then you went quiet again. I'm so sorry. No, that was so funny. Technical difficulties. <laughs> so, okay. Graceful but not warlike. Riding quietly. Wearing a winged helmet. Referring to those higher graces of the imagination, which sometimes characterize this card. He too is a dreamer, but the images of the side of his sense haunt him in his vision. Divinatory meanings. Arrival. Approach. Sometimes that of a messenger, advances, proposition, demeanor, invitation, and incitement, reversed. Trickery, artifice, subtlety, swindling, duplic duplicity, and fraud. Okay, now, I realized something just now, that we are yeah. talking about symbology, and I feel like I have suddenly realized that I missed, maybe, uh, Symbology 101. Now, mm -hmm. when you say reversed... I completely forget what that means. I know it means sort of the inverse meaning. That just means like it it's dealt to you. Ugh, it's dealt to you upside down. Okay, okay. Uh, like so, literally, if you just flip it over. You know, it's kind of problematic that like you know, uh, uh, feminine men are always uh, seen as uh, dealing with duplicity. You know, it's it's. Uh, of course, yes. I agree. We should cancel the writer weight for homophobia. <laughs> Thank you. Big <laughs> agree. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Koala face in chat just says true. <laughs> okay, Big if true. Many What's it? Are... Is it reversed or inverse? Reversed. Reversed. Okay. You will hear both. You will hear both. You yeah. will hear. Uh, you will also that... hear inverse. Um, uh, and uh, inverted. It, it all means the same thing. If you hear someone talking about it, it's just the card is upside down and has a has a different type of meaning sometimes it can mean like it doesn't change the meaning at all sometimes it, it it totally changes the meaning like to the opposite of what it was it really depends on the card and the kind of like way each card works is there a word for what it's called when it's dealt to you just like normal right um, dignified dignified okay. I, I mean that's that's a way of saying it um that's the one that i think gets it chat says upright but they're not the upright. teachers well there's yeah there's upright averse like uh, it, if you say upright no one will say you're wrong yeah this is i mean there's a lot of words for it because everyone has their own little like oh my teacher used this word blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. okay which is part of it which is part of it godzilla style okay <laughs> godzilla style oh i like uh i like the idea of like Peter or Jesus style cards. Ah, there you go. 
Here, here. I, and now for our for our next exercise, Jame, I have something. For, I have another card for you. Oh, a, a toy for me already? Yes, indeed. Okay. So now we're going to go to, instead of instead of doing a, a card of the same suit, we're going to do a same type of card, but with a mm. different suit. Okay. So this is the Knight of Swords. Let's put this Knight of Swords in my house of... Hey, uh, are you folks able to put your screen on so I can see it on the Discord instead of on the stream at, like, late? Yeah. It's, uh, oh, is it not on? Oh, it's okay. The, it's not because of the delicious donut-style treat, but the other... <laughs> there we go. The, the, the golf, I think. The golf shut it off. Okay, that's why. There we go. Golf. Uh, you'll just have to mute the stream, or else you will hear me twice. Yeah, all of the notes, It's everything is legible to me now. Yay! You can ledge it! Okay. We all understand. All beautiful. I'm ledging so hard right now. Knight of Swords, so I'm gonna say, first thing I'm noticing, not very polite. Second mm -hmm. thing I'm noticing, it is not a clear sky. It mm -hmm. is it is blue and it is it is with rough clouds, almost like the wind is going very quickly, much like mm -hmm. the horse's mane, which is going very quickly. Um, oh, and the spurs on his terrible boot are sharper than are or they're drawn sharper than they were on the Knight of Cups, I believe. Mm -hmm. Do I see fish? I don't think I can ledge fish in this one, but I can ledge fish in that one. Hmm. Uh, that so, so, might be a bird. Oh. I see butterflies and like I, feathers, like the. Should I? Okay, wait. CT. Should yeah, are, yeah. are we just going over the visual symbolism, or like should I start like talking about like what each of the cards is? Like, so okay, my my like my plan of attack you know? here is that my plan of attack here is that we're going to go over the visual symbolism first, and then we're going to talk about the we're going to talk about the deeper occult sim symbolism behind that because okay, like, I think the, hmm? there's 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 seven colors, which is more complex than four elements. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that starting like being being uh, being Platonists about this and just like mm -hmm. going like in integers of you know, three, four, seven, twelve, uh, twenty-two. So, so where would you recommend that we start from? From here, I think that people should know that, like, the four suits are the four elements: air, water, earth, and fire. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. The four elements has to do with, um different aspects of one's life like you know air is, is sort of intellectual spiritual uh kind of flighty and swift water is is, is uh emotional um and uh uh sort of um it, it conceals and changes yeah it's still very like like transient and then like earth uh, is, is is cups or water is cups earth is uh earth is a uh, 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 pentacles it has to deal with like your physical health well-being finances uh your your dealings with like the world institutions all sorts of stuff like that your Fine. ability to the sleep Actions. well and like fill your um, stomach stuff like that uh uh, fire is your passions romances um kind of uh, uh like principles virtues sort of thing um and ones or that's four of them um so here here let's let's give jame a second to to take notes color coding I'm color coding them you can keep talking uh, okay okay hi we're just gonna leave now <laughs> that was it i'm all alone <laughs> Stream over. Uh, sorry, but doomed. <laughs> yeah. So each of each of the main each of the main suits represents some aspect of the self, right? You've got air, which is swords; water, which is cups; earth, which is pentacles; fire, which is wands, and they all 
they all kind of come together to represent one of the sort of four corners of being a human being. And that's part of why, uh, for those at home, that's why the magician has like one of each, uh, like he has like one of each in his card, right? Like the magician has a sword and a wand and a cup and a coin. Because he's kind of balance and harmony between all four of them. Oh, they're also, no, I'm not going to, this is not super important to know, but they're the four powers of the Sphinx, which are to know, to will, to dare, and to be silent. Um, those matter if you're doing ceremonial magic. No one thinks about them. Otherwise. Much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Knight of Cups versus Knight of Swords. What is mm. what is the meaning of the Knight of Swords compared to Knight of Cups? So here I can. Why don't I read from the the pictorial key first, and then Riley, you can launch into this. How's that? Sure. <clears throat> he is riding in full course, as if scattering his enemies. In the design, he he is really a prototypical hero of romantic chivalry. He might almost be Galahad, whose sword is swift and sure because he is clean of heart. Divinatory meanings, skill, bravery, capacity, defense, address, enmity, wrath, war, destruction, opposition, resistance, and ruin. There is, there is therefore a sense in which this card signifies death, but it carries this meaning only in its proximity to other cards of fatality. Reversed, imprudence, incapacity, and extravagance. Yay. Okay. So So reading these decks is a little bit like doing almost like mental math. Adding mm -hmm. up the meanings of some cards and comparing them to the other cards in the deck. Yes. And if you oh. get too many bad cards, then some neutral cards might mean worse things. Yeah. Um the the, the the court cards, I should say, are also associated with the elements. So like when you have like the um the Knight of Swords, isn't he heir of air? Like he's he's like the most airy possible kind of aspect. Yeah, of yeah. They they kind of stack in the court cards. He's intellectual, um he's he's kind of caught up in the world of like thought and ideas and um concepts. Like things aren't really material. It's a uh, it's a lot of uh, like ideas and um, uh, like not related to kind of practical material things necessarily at all. Like really more of a uh, card like that has to deal with pure concepts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, we are starting with the court cards because I just started with whatever we drew from the deck. I thought we were starting, like, at the numbers, and so I was studying a lot of the, like, individual numbers this week, but... Yeah, we, like, the, the planning went so awry in this stream. I, I thought this, I thought this stream we were going to be doing an Ace of Pentacles or whatever, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, also uh, kind of what I thought we were going to be doing, but it's okay. Gone. It is erased. You, we've we've killed it. All right. How you doing, James? I'm doing good. Hey, it's it's not my fault. I'm the one learning about the cards, so I can't <laughs> be blamed. All right. All right. right. So here, why don't why don't we pick why don't we pick an ace? What does that mean? I mean, it's a deck of cards. It has aces. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip through my deck until I find an ace. Chat, place your bets. Um, I'm gonna bet cup, what cup of ace, ace of cups. Hmm. I said, what's seventy-eight divided by four? Uh, God, you I have uh, you have a one in uh, eighteen and a half. I can't read. I don't. It's, don't. Well, there's also the major arcana, which don't match up with the. the yeah, but you're still shuffling through your deck. I'm saying, like, if you you can't. Oh right, it. right. Let's yeah, see. Yeah. It is the Ace of Wands here. Oh, this will this will be a fun one to to look at here. Okay. Hand me that awesome card. Can do. Let me let me pull up an image for you. 
Congratulations to all the wands heads in chat that guessed correctly. <laughs> wands pilled wand cells. <laughs> wands pilled stave cells in chat. You have literally, earned a free wand if you uh, find me. I'm literally a fireman. Okay. Hi. That's Hi, the third time that's happened. Um, can you try DMing me the cards instead? I think it's every time I open the uh, tiny chat yes, in Discord. I, I can do that, yes. Yay! Silly. Click there to are see going it. to be VODs of this, yes. We're going to delete all footage the moment the stream is over, so if you've missed any information, it will be on the test, and you will be losing the test, which is a new thing you can do. Thanks to Tara. You're going to lose it, test. If you get enough answers wrong on the test, they take you out back and uh, execute you. It's awesome. It's yeah. It's like a it's like a young adult novel. We're getting sorted <laughs> into our like uh, professions. Right, we're getting we're getting sorted into houses or whatever. But it's They're based, based on, on how good you are at wizard. They're based guessing. on the of the tarot. <laughs> God. I actually I tested and I got the fool, which makes me. <laughs> special one. I'm going to do the revolution. Oh, you're the protagonist. <laughs> of course. So, okay. Okay, James. Tell tell us what you what you can think about the uh the Ace of Wands. Okay. So, the first thing I'm noticing here is this is the first one of tonight where there's not a person on it so much as there's a part of a person on it. The mm -hmm. hand is very symbolic in that it is the thing that we use to do things. Chat points it out first before I do, but yeah, kind of phallic. Um, hmm. I, okay, this is another one with a gray sky, which is interesting. Okay, okay, maybe. Oh, and the gray sky is above, but there's a colorful landscape below it. So I'm almost like picturing this as like an artistic endeavor. The wand as a paintbrush, maybe, or a tool for the artist. And maybe the wind and or storm cloud is some sort of inspiration? That's mm. such a good assessment. That's really cool. That's a, yeah, yeah. You're, get, you're really getting the hang of this. Yay! So, okay. A hand issuing from a cloud grasps a stout wand or club. Divinatory meanings. Uh -huh. Creation. Invention. <gasps> enterprise. The powers which result in these. Principle. Beginning. Source, birth, family, and origin, and a sense of the virility which is behind them. The starting point of enterprises, according to another account, money, fortune, and inheritance, reversed. Fall, decadence, ruin, perdition, to perish, also a certain clouded joy. Hmm. You're really getting the hang of this. Yeah. Huh? Okay. So, really good assessment of it. Like, for, for, you're, you're... go ahead. For the next one, I think you should make me guess the inverse as well. Ooh, okay, okay. So, like, as what I wanted to demonstrate with this little exercise here was like, the more that you learn about the tarot symbology, the more that you can kind of think in the tarot symbology, if that makes sense. It, yeah. it, it becomes, it's like Riley said at the beginning of the stream, it is a language for making shit up. Okay, that's you kinda, you, fun. Yeah, it is pretty fun. So, so our our goal for the end of the stream is I kind of want I kind of want to give you enough like tools so that you can make up your own tarot card. Okay. And then we can we can play around with that. So, right. excellent excellent job analyzing the uh the uh, Ace of Wands. Yeah. Well, so the the aces are the like kind of like all of the energy of the wands and the suit of fire is just kind of condensed in like a pure form into the ace card um it's it's the kind of pure like energy and potency of fire of creativity of kind of like the life force that is you know the suit of fire mm -hmm. um and 
So what we were talking about earlier with the uh, how every every suit represents something, the the aces are kind of the most distilled conception of that, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The aces are 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 uh, like the, the the purest, and then like um, you could think of maybe to to, to get alchemical with it, you could think of like like the other cards as as, as things that like the ace has bonded to uh, and is expressing itself in like different reactions with stuff yeah that's a good way of thinking about it okay so so out of all of the decks or out out of all the cards in the deck the aces are going to be the most symbolic or they're going to be others that are very uh the aces are the most condensed abstract i mean version of the suit in which they are in if that makes sense like the ace is the kind of like pure sunshine version of generally what like the rest of the cards in that camp are going to be like it does that make sense i think hmm. so yeah um and then everything else is kind of like playing on that theme but the the most symbolic cards are probably going to be the majors, and there are twenty two of those, and those have all the weird stuff on them. Mm -hmm. Those are all unique. I, I wanted to I wanted to butter you up for a little bit before we jump into the major arcana. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's kind of hard to like contextualize them or like understand what's going on a little bit. Um, okay. Until you yeah. So. Hmm. Okay, Riley. Do we do we jump into the major arcana or do we talk about the the colors? Um, I mean, it, it, it depends on who is coloring the deck. Everyone kind of approaches things differently. But there was a there was a group of wizards, um, and a bunch of them decided that they were gonna color code the tarot because they all had autism, and uh, I think they did a really good job. Um, what what's Moina Mathers is is mainly responsible for the color correspondences of the tarot. She was really yes. Good. Uh, so like. You know, you'll mostly see, with the suit of cups, uh, you know, it's water, so you're going to see lots of, like, blues and cool colors and greens. And with the suit of air, you're going to, uh, like, you're going to see, like, yellows and greens quite a bit um, more. Uh, I don't know if this is true of the, um, the Rider White, but, like, in, like, other post-Golden Dawn decks, this is very true. Um, with, with the, uh, like, the suit of, like, I, I, hey, can I, can you help me with the words? Um, yeah. uh, the earth one. It, uh, pentacles. Thank you. I, see, I, I I'm such a Thoth sicko mm -hmm. that, like, it's, uh, it's discs or, like, the other decks I use, it's coins, it's stones, it changes, but it's all the same kind of, like, thing that it's getting at. Oh yeah, it's uh, always it's always like swords, wands, and cups for like every deck. But then there's a lot of differences when it comes to like pentacles or coins or discs or whatever. The earth one is always weird. Well, sometimes they'll do they'll they'll say they'll say rods uh, for for uh, right right things or the like like uh, blades uh, or or uh, chalices or whatever. But like mm -hmm. that doesn't happen very often. But for for some reason. <laughs> The uh, the Earth one, everyone wants to call different names. The uh, the pentacles or the coins or the discs mm -hmm. or the stones or the um. Have you? Do you think? Do you remember any others? Um, oh gosh. Um, spheres. I've seen spheres. Spheres. That's weird. That's in, that's in like a like a Thoth clone that has a lot of like extra star symbolism thrown in. It's a cool one. It's a Spanish. Artist. Oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I made deck recommendations, but then like, it, it, it's like too much. in it, terms of deck recommendations, it's like mess around with the Rider Waite Smith until you you really know your stuff, and then mess start exploring from there. Rider Smith, and then get a get a Marseille, and then get a Thoth, and then get a Heinkel, then get a, another Thoth. And then get a, a, a hermetic tarot, and then get the uh, the tarot of ceremonial magic, and then get the philosopher's tarot, and then get, the, you know, 
Uh, yeah, and then uh, throw all those away and buy 11 copies of my deck. Yeah, Spice, <laughs> CT is going to combine all of the cards into one big card. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only card you'll ever need. Use exclamation uh, point tarot to see the big card. Yay! It's actually a, it's actually a big, like, twister mat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> a twister mat with tarot? A ritual twister mat? It's the final, yeah, it's the final card. It's gonna be made out of card material, too. And it's gonna be, like, in the deck, like, in the box. And, like, the other <laughs> like shuffle around oh. oh my god okay i okay okay mm -hmm. ct mm -hmm. i need you to tell chat a a fun fact about the knight of swords because i feel like we didn't get any fun facts about him uh i just had a i have a lightning bolt of inspiration ah uh, fuck i can use my learning that that thing happened to me and i have to write down an idea privately real quick Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so the the Knight of you'll want to learn about the Knight of Swords. So okay, remember how remember how Riley was saying that like the Knight of Swords is like the airiest air card because you know the knights are all associated with air and swords are air. Well, look how this, much damn wind is happening in that card. Wait, this is a different thing than being the Ace, which is like the like totality of air. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. Morris, it's like the he's like. The most acute form of air, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Most specific. Or like, uh, greatest exemplar of it, rather than a pure concept. He's he's the, uh, he's the like, the pointiest end of, of air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's the, the sword, if you will. Indeed. It freaking windy. Okay, okay, got okay. got that damn wind. James, uh, are you done writing down your so, thing? Yup. Um, he's. Uh, I I like I like um. The description of the the Thoth by Lon Mylo Duquette, like the Thoth version of him, which hmm. is like, uh, in this version he's not on a horse but he's on a chariot. He says the chariot is easy enough to move, but quite unable to progress in any definite direction except by accident the knight of swords is maybe like the most adhd card it's like just pure like mm. mind going a million miles a minute but nothing physical is happening you know mm. that's a good way of putting it it's a good way of putting it all right stream again chat take your bets i'm gonna i'm gonna deal cards until we get a major arcana and then that'll be our next next little exercise there we go I don't know why the stream stopped that time. Neither do I, but I realized I wasn't able to see it. I didn't even touch it that time. Something's fucked with my Discord tonight. I think Ooh. Yeah, the description of like like mind moving quickly, nothing material going on. Well, we got maybe the hardest card in the deck to explain. Um... <laughs> okay, I mean, what is it? <laughs> we got the fool. Oh, that's just like the the, the the kind of the silence before any vowel that you uh, omit. It's the it's, it's the pure potentiality. It's the, the, um, he's 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 the he's the babe in the egg. Um, it's the 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 thing before the egg. The 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 ultimate beginning. Extreme potential. Somebody. Let's see if I can't download this without breaking something. Is, Although, is, yeah, is Shrek setting off to get his swamp back? Indeed. The of the, the uh, and actually, the fool has I, maybe my favorite little detail in the entire tarot. I'll, I'll show it to you when you can zoom in on it in the for chat. Let's see. Dog. The dog is pretty good. I, I, do, I do like love, the dog. I do love like the white rose as like a like just he's purely innocent like it's just he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing yeah he so is about the, uh, to walk off a cliff which i like he is and that's actually really important for the symbology <laughs> <laughs> like he's he's not he's stepping carelessly right he's he's mm. not looking where he's going okay oh. also coincidentally the fool is also air but not like the the four elements air but like the three initial Kab Kabbalah elements air. 
Earth. Oh yeah, yeah. Where in, so instead of Earth, they have dust. Of, it is also kind of like like flighty and and uh, in motion and to do with the kind of like like conceptual, not yet formed things. Yeah, the Sefer Yetzera air. Wow, good good call. I I have autism. I oh no, there was a uh, there was a chatter. Uh, Joey Jojo, who called this, who immediately pulled the Sefer Yetzer off. Yeah. So my one of my favorite little details about the Fool is the the white rose, which is like, you know, purity and innocence. But it's also that would eventually become like one of the capital symbols of Western esotericism, because like you had the the Rosicrucians, who their whole thing was the rose of like you know, God becoming the world as like a rosebud unfolding into all these these rose petals and the uh, the white rose being like the, the rare and hidden version of it, which was also kind of Western esoterica. Like, it, there's a lot of fun symbolism in the idea of the white rose. There's also the English Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which I think is, okay, I think it's really cool, like the, the kind of combined white and red rose symbolism that like... Yeah. Uh, Jericism, but also is like, 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 like has to do with like Jacobite rebellions and like the the, the fucking like. Yeah. Sorry, this is this is so off topic. No, no, it's like it's a wizard stream. It's all on topic. Like, like my, my one of my favorite things is when something is like cosmic and political at the same time. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like. What's the, there's like a bit in the Book of Mormon where it's like God has really intense opinions on how a hotel should be financed. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, no, this is what Doctrine and Covenants is like. I don't know if that's in the Book of Mormon, but uh, like in, in in Doctrine and Covenants, God is like, all right, and then Joseph shall set up a bank and it shall have X, Y, and Z characteristics, and uh, yeah, it's like it should have these interest <laughs> rates and these like, qualifications for loans. But then, like, 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 people ask, like, the Mormon prophet, like, "Hey, what has God told you lately?" And he's like, "You know, I don't know." <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but we're, I don't know. Okay, I'm not gonna start talking church politics because if I start... <laughs> so, so, okay. We, why have you turned the fool on this on its side? Um. So that I'm making a card. He's oh. Not anymore, right. Oh. oh. The fool. Oh, that's the beginning. Oh, yeah, the Fool is like the kind of ultimate beginnings card. But he's also, he's the man who's achieved everything. He's the old king himself. Yeah, he he's the beginning and he's the end. Hmm. Uh, the first and the last. The, mm -hmm. the Alpha and Omega. The whole uh, As it were. Wait, okay, so the Fool he's, he's, is... He's in like a pure state of bliss, but like the, the initial Fool is like the kind of like un unrefined kind of uh like naive bliss but then the end is the kind of like the foolish bliss of like the 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 wise fool the old man the uh like okay. uh, yeah yeah the he uses the bliss of uh of a kind of the bliss of a sort of achieved wisdom. earthly wisdom hmm i would say more than earth in the final form, but like in the like initial form, it's very earthly. Right, right, right yeah. yeah. Here, let's let's read. Everyone's uh, outfits for the Rider so much. It's like very theatrical. It feels like you're doing like like like. I think that like they were having like theater kids do still life poses is what I understand. That would make have, total sense. Have you seen that? Actually, I've seen some of the like like process stills that she was using. Um, really. Yeah, they have them. Like, they have, you know, there were photographs done. That's cool. I had no idea. Um, yeah, so, like, there's, like, some of the poses of the initial, like, models. Um, let me see if I can find you some. And we can yeah, that'd up. be fascinating. So here, let's read, let's read the fool. With light step, as if earth and its trammels had little power to restrain him, a young man in gorgeous vestments pauses at the brink of a precipice among great heights of the world. He surveys the blue distance before him, its expanse of sky rather than the prospect below. His act of eager walking is still indicated, though he is stationary at the given moment. His dog is still bounding. The edge which opens on the depth has no terror, as if angels were waiting to uphold him. If it came about that he leapt from that height, 
His countenance is full of intelligence and expectant dream. He has a rose in one hand and in the other a costly wand from which depends over his right shoulder a wallet curiously embroidered. He is a prince of the other world on his travels through this one, all amidst the morning glory. In the keen air, the sun, which shines behind him, knows whence he came, whither he is going, and how he will return by another path after many days. Yay! He's, he's so good. We love the fool. We love the fool. Gorgeous vestments. His dog is... Wait. He does have some gorgeous vestments. Don't we all? Mm -hmm. We straight up love his gorgeous vestments. <laughs> Question, how many circles in his shirt? I don't know. I've never counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe? Unclear what that is. That one looks like a snake. I ten. Don't know. It's either nine or ten. ten. Yay! We. I, I do like the little conspiracy circles that you've drawn around the symbology. That's fun. <laughs> it's like a Mr. Beast thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> I, s <laughs> I sent a hundred thousand fools on their journey across the precipice. <laughs> And the dog is pogging in the thumbnail. <laughs> the dog is imagining pogging. like a Mr. Beast thumbnail that's like, I imminentize the eschaton. Like a... <laughs> it's, like... him, it's him soy facing <laughs> and Gabriel blowing the trumpet. Yes. Uh, okay. One of my favorite things. There's like a little poem uh, that Trolley wrote, and in it, like he talks about like you know all the people rising up out of their graves in the trumpet card and. Uh, uh, waking up when he blows it and then like like as they're passing by one of them remarks like some people never wake up for anything less hmm. um, and it, it makes it so good um mm -hmm. uh and called... he was talking about mr beast <laughs> well he, okay yes crowley was always talking about mr beast but he's he <laughs> mr. Beast. that's why he called himself the great beast good pivot <laughs> Let's see, let's see. I want okay, to wait, Toby well, was the Mr. Beast of his time. He had an insane amount of money. Uh, he called himself oh Mr. Beast. He probably fucked a lot. He was friends with transgender women. Uh, <laughs> that one meme that's like, died this year, born this year, welcome back, <laughs> Hosey Min. <laughs> just like, welcome back, Mr. Beast. <laughs> Did you know that Aleister Crowley and and Mr. Beast all like they died and were born only like what probably like thirty years apart or something? More than that, like sixty years apart. Someone lived thirty years in between them, and you can find their date, and then you can be like, see, this is the reincarnation of this. Person. Right. We have to find we have to find whoever was born on the exact moment that Aleister Crowley died, and then we have to find that guy who died on the exact moment that Mr. Beast was born. We can find their midpoint. I like, I like, uh, I think, I don't know if it's the Tibetans, but like after they die, you know, like you gotta wait like nine months until you can like, or sometimes up to a year. Because the, how long does the Bardo last? The Bardo is 72 days. I don't know. So you have like two months in uh, the kind of washing machine of God. And then they they put you back into some lady. Hmm. Or uh, oh right right. Hmm. Okay okay okay. Birthing person. Shame. Hmm. We're we're about we're about halfway through the stream. All right. How, how how are we doing? Any questions that you've got for us? Hmm. Let me see. And yes. chat, feel free to speak up. We've got we've got nothing but time here. I wrote down some questions. You okay. were talking about major cards, minor cards, and colors. Mm -hmm. What is a major versus a minor? So, okay, the fool. There's, there's 22 majors. Yeah. And, um, uh, subtract 22 from 78, and then you have that many minors. So, okay, okay. You know, you know, normal deck of cards, how there's like hearts that go one through 10. 
And then there's like the the Jack, the King, and the Queen, and that's a suit. Yes. Same thing for tarot. There's like uh, there's an Ace of Coins, then it goes all the way up to ten, and then there's a there's a, a Knight, a Page, a King, and a Queen. And then that's that's a tarot suit. They just got an extra court card. Okay. And then there's the Major Arcana which are, that's 22 unique cards, labeled 1 through 22. Okay. I see. 22 unique. They're, they're all special little guys. Yeah. Um, and the, the fool is the first one, or it's the zeroth one. Of eight. And at what point do we drop the, the, um, the, the Sephiroth and Paths bomb? I, I was... I was thinking, like, that. all that stuff is not strictly necessary for using the tarot, so we'll... It, it, helped, why me don't we... it helped me memorize it more than anything else helped me memorize it. Oh, yeah, yeah, but... So I was thinking, I was thinking once we get... That'll be a good thing to talk about once we get Jame drawing on their own card. Okay. Because that'll, that'll, that'll be something that we can ramble about while, while Jame is doodling. So, okay, okay. Jame, do you, do you feel ready to start, like, building your own tarot card? Yeah, I, you know what? I, I think so. Actually, okay. Uh, I'm gonna need one more completely random fact from each of you that I will attempt to incorporate into my card. Does that sound like a good deal? Hmm. What card are you going to do? Are you going to make a... Wait, wait, do you want to make a major or a minor? Well, what do you yeah, recommend? Um, I want to know what you're feeling. I you mean, know? if the majors yeah. are, are yeah, the yeah, unique yeah. cards... Yeah, why don't we, why don't we add another major arcana? Yeah, I, uh... The, the, cause it's, it's kind of hard to get, like a feel for what the what the majors are like until you get one that um isn't like a symbol for infinite potentiality all right <laughs> you know? all right why don't why don't we do another major arcana then all right chat uh here take your take your bets i'm gonna start drawing until we get another major arcana It is. Wow, okay. Nothing. Nothing. More. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Temperance. We got temperance. Temperance. Let's bring the, let's bring that temperance into my DMs. Come on, I chat. do like temperance. Do the temperance hop. The angel's trans. Yes, actually. Oh my gosh, I have. I have well, and also like a symbol for virginity, right? Like as well, she's holding like the picture is like an artistic symbol of uh, of virginity. No, it's it's like or um, always cups in this in this. Uh... Yeah, it's two cups in the Raider weight. Okay. Um, the, the 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 temperance card I think is really interesting because it's it's one of those like in the Rider White it has that like wings motif that shows up in like the Devil and in Judgment. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, a few other places in uh, in in the Lovers as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Here, this is me... temperance. This is temperance. Right. So here, let me pull yeah, up. Yeah, there's, there's the lilies behind her, which is another like symbol of like kind of purity, and uh, uh, hmm. uh, all right, here, let's. Well, read. I, I want to say placidity, but it's not like it's not stillness, but it is like a it is like a peace or like a yeah, it's like, like a concord. Like, it's like concord. It's uh, it, it, everything's equilibrium. Harmony, harmony yeah. is a good. Uh, <clears throat> A winged angel with the sign of the sun upon his forehead, and on his breast the square and triangle of the septenary. I speak of him in the masculine sense, but the figure is neither male nor female. It is held to be pouring the essences of life from chalice to chalice. 
It has one foot upon the earth and one upon the waters, thus illustrating the nature of the essences. A direct path goes up to the certain heights on the verge of the horizon, and above there is a great light through which the, cl the crown is seen vaguely. Here, uh, Kirov is some part of the eternal sacred, uh, the secret of eternal life, as it is possible to man in his incarnation. All the conventional emblems are renounced herein. And so are the conventional meanings, which refer to changes in seasons, perpetual movement of life, even the combination of ideas. It is, moreover, untrue to say that the figure symbolizes the genius of the sun, though it is the analogy of, of solar light, realized in the third part of our human triplicity. It is called temperance, fantastically, because when the rule of it obtains in our consciousnesses, it tempers, combines, and harmonizes the psychic and the material natures. Under the rule, we know in our rational part something of whence we came and whither we are going. The, the Thoth name for this card is Art, and then there's, a, there's like a two-headed uh, hermaphrodite mixing alchemical things together um which i think suits the like symbolic meaning in like a more active way whereas this is like a it's 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 a kind of gentler version of that like the oh, isn't lot, like, yeah today art. is art day of the thalamic holy season it is, the, yeah. the 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 holy season readings are so good, but like they, they don't make a lot of sense to people else. I, why do you know that? Uh, somebody was mentioning it in chat, and I was like, "Oh right, yeah, it is." Oh, is it? Wait, who's mentioning it in chat? It's May, of course. It's May, oh, yeah. Cool. Of course, it's May. Uh, I did them last year, and now there's like two people this year doing them, and I'm like, "Oh, cool, I can." vaguely remember what I did last year. Right, right. Oh my god. Okay. So what elements go into making a card a major arcana card? Like, what, is it just that it is unique, or does it symbolize something about the rest of the deck? Or does the rest of the deck symbolize something about the major arcana? Both. Both. Um, okay, so they influence are, each other. The more, like, these are the more, like, active kind of forces of the universe it, it, like whereas like the, the 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 suits are are kind of objects of the universe the the like the majors are are like active processes and energies and forces that cause these things to move about you know like it's like the driving so a uh it's like if the if the suits are the paints, these are the brushes. Okay. Yeah. Basically, Kinda. I mean, like, these these are are seen as like connecting, um, the ten spheres of the. Hmm. the, the, the they're, they're, they're connectors. They bring things from one place to another. Yeah, they're like the the regulating forces of the universe that like make physics and magic Have you ever work. used connects? Connects, you know, little, like, yes. Wheels? Yeah, these are the sticks, all right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna add a picture <laughs> Chat, of that make... next to the notes. <laughs> Chat, did any of that make sense? <laughs> oh fuck, it took me to Amazon. <laughs> I want to buy Kinex right now. <laughs> the wizards need me to buy Kinex. Siri, Kinex, large. <laughs> now. Oh. They are so big. Yeah. So, so, so the like, the like socket pieces are the are the um the court cards or the the the. The suit cards. The suit cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And the sticks are the majors. Toys. Finally, the Finally. wizards start explaining it in a way I can understand through a toy. <laughs> I get toys. I mean, it, whatever it takes to explain this shit, honestly. <laughs> it will it be on the test at the end of my life. 
I think someone could diagnose all three of us from this stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chad is just going like playing toys with wizards. <laughs> Yay, CT toys. voice, I'm beneath this. <laughs> I'm beneath this. Okay. Is, is there a card that symbolizes the connective property of the major arcana? That was a fun question. Uh, He's Mercury. That's what Mercury does. Yeah. Hmm. So what is that? The chariot? No. The, 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 I, well, the chariot carries the, 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 the Holy Grail. That's what, that's what he does. Right. It's the, the vehicle. Yeah. Uh... He's, well, he's the knight in the chariot. That's, 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 that's the, you know, he's the kind of. Right, right. So the chariot is like cancer, but like a very like. He's like in his like most. Appropriate aspect where he's using his kind of like like. Crabbiness is his, 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 his kind of combativeness and his uh his like shelledness to 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 um, protect something very sacred and uh, to carry it from from one place to another. But mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. like the the magician is more about like connecting things and delivering messages and right um, right the the underlying uh, system of connections itself like hmm. so is there a page of swords yeah okay there's, there's a page of like there's a page of swords a page of uh like okay there's a page of swords there's a page of wands page of cups page of coins there's a page of books Okay. CT, 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 what did you major in to learn this much, assuming you learned it in college? I didn't go to college. Uh, this is, you can go to, you can get a uh, Western Esotericism degree from, uh, it's a university in Am Amsterdam. Is it the University of Amsterdam? I believe it is the University of Amsterdam. And there is a, uh, there's an American college in, I believe, Virginia? Uh, I, it's maybe Pennsylvania? I, I'm I not it sure. Was, it was like, it's like Northeast, but like not a major school, but like it was one that does like have like connections to like theology. Yeah, yeah. But you can, you can get a degree like the occult sciences there. It's like a very small program, but you can do it. Oh, like there's, so there is one in Virginia that has a folklore degree. Ah. Like, a lot of religious studies courses, like religious studies programs, will have a course or two on this stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, it was kind of, you weren't really supposed to study it for a long time in academia, and now that's changing a lot. And so the whole field is opening up, and like we're having groundbreaking scholarship, and there's so much to do. Like, it, um, so much. There's so much. So to much. Do. There's so much to, to kind of like retranslate and study and like uh, cross compare and analyze historically. Oh yeah, yeah. The the shit that I'm reading for my book is like you can learn like from the kind of like margins of history like this. Like at the margins are where things like kind of uh, coincide and collide and and, and uh, fight it out. And I think like like esotericism is maybe like one of the most interesting like areas because it like shows you all of this like cultural interchange, political upheaval. Um, uh, like like the way people were conceptualizing themselves, their role in their lives in the universe, in society, all this sort of stuff, like becomes very apparent in these yeah. systems. And then you get to like look at like the kind of you also get to look at like the extremists throughout history and see like it's all also these people have like it's really cool. It just it, it exposes so much about the human condition, and I think it's a it was a real shame that like we don't have a lot of scholarship on it from the 20th century because like if you were studying it you were seen as kind of like a kook or like whatever yeah um, yeah like, well and also it's like it's so heavy. unfiltered like every like every occultist is like like nobody's tr nobody's writing esoterica because they're like trying to schmooze with the the popular crowd it's always some weirdo who's like so autistic that if he doesn't write this book then he'll die or something yeah. it's like i, I need to write this Every text has, like, such a bone to pick. Yeah, um, they're all so petty. 
they're queenie. I love I love magicians because they're like the drag queens of like history. They're like they're like the drag queens of academia. It's hilarious. They, they all like not only do they have a bone to pick, but they all have a chip on their shoulder about something. Yeah, like, no, there's like there's like some guy who wrote something that pissed them off so much that they had to write like twenty books. <laughs> yeah, like that's um oh, it's the 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 guy who died in prison in the Renaissance, uh, the the Kabbalist. Fucking what uh, is his name? It's not. Uh, it's Bruno. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gi that's like every Giordano Bruno thing. It's always like, like his Kabbalistic plays are like this is a play about why all of Giordano Bruno's haters are wrong. Um, the Spanish anarchists would sing hymns about Giordano Bruno. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, they're. He was seen more of as like an like a enlightenment like scientific figure by them, which I, I think is so interesting. Like the kind of like paradoxical. Like a lot of these people were like the head scientists in the world at the you know like John D. Oh yeah, yeah. Bruno, Isaac Newton, like all of these people. Um, but like at the same time, like thought this because this was just how like they dealt with the world. They called it like natural philosophy. It was just kind of like. You know, right? It was, it was, just, it was so, it was yeah. super normal to them. But it's like, water. it's part of why it's so funny when people are like, ah, yes, Isaac Newton, the the man of like ultimate rationality. It's like even by the standards of like early Enlightenment scientists or whatever, like proto scientists, he was fucking crazy. Like there was well, so much it, shit that he like he, knew that he couldn't persona. say publicly. His public persona was kind of established while he was alive before any of that like came out. Yeah. Like, William Blake, like, writing about Newton, like, you'd think he was writing about, like, Richard Dawkins. Um, literally, literally. It's like, he clearly understood. It's like, I need to have this persona that goes along with the times. And meanwhile, in his, his actual notebooks are like, well, day 35 of trying to recreate the human nervous system out of finely braided alchemical gold. Wait, what? That's yeah. So cool. He that he was obsessed with the human. He was obsessed with specifically the human nervous system. This is my homunculus. One week on yellow bile. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everyone? This is me. Two months on that rubedo. Oh my god. Jeez. It was uh, it was Newton who was low key an Aryan. No, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't um okay he wasn't an arianist newton was actually his own like he kind of had his own private heresy that only he believed like he was definitely a non-trinitarian but he wasn't an arianist that, that's that's one of the most british characteristics is, is like having your own like like secret heresies physic that mm -hmm. you're, you like insist upon but not um, too publicly because that is not done it's, just, it's not dumb. <laughs> well, okay. I like I like that William Blake was just like he couldn't help himself, but like put it out there. Right, um, right. There was a little bit of William Blake that was like, maybe I can be the English Faust. He's so good. He's awesome. He's, okay, I, okay. Jame. Ha, huh, yeah. It is time. I am currently working on my symbolism that i will be adding to the card i'm making okay, notes let's 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 chat it out right what are okay, you what are you okay. thinking i'm thinking of a forest card right mm -hmm. like a, a big old forest ominous looking but there's various other symbolic things you can spot in it okay so what is what is the uh What's the, the central image of your card? Is it going to be like a big special tree? I was thinking it would sort of be a bunch of trees seen from afar, maybe surrounding a central subject looking at the forest that sort of peaks into the sky like a mountain range. You, you want, in my opinion at least, you want like a central image you can focus on, like one okay. tree, There's one guy. Yeah a stone circle in the middle of the forest. Ah, oh, there you go. Hmm, okay, okay. So... That happens quite a bit. Stone hmm. circles in the middle of... 
yo, someone was showing me some stone circle sites that like are like less known that they visit regularly, and Ooh. I am like, I want to go to the UK now. It it's got some cool ass ruins. When I was uh, when I was in St Andrews, I got to see the ruins of one of the oldest Catholic churches in England. Is it one of those ones that was like built upon like a like a Mithraic temple? I don't think so. Um, apparently, do you know the name of the church? I I do know that I do know the church you're talking about. I I wanted to go to it, but it was like an a six hour train ride into Scotland. CT, there's like dozens of those though. But there's no, there's one that still has the Mithraic temple like up and running, and there's like historians and actors that'll like, that like do a Mithraic mass. Okay. What? Yeah. No, I wanted to go to it so bad, but it was like a six hour train ride into London. That's just what getting around Utah is like. Yeah. Yeah. You have trains though, so. Yeah. Well, e even by out. train, it was like a six hour ride. Yeah. Okay, okay. I want to go there so bad. I I want to do like a... I want to find ancient sites near me and take as many photographs as possible and then like... I have a bunch of... I, vi I visited a lot of major like southwest um, like Puebloan ruins and stuff. Oh um, yeah. But I want to visit a lot of like the mound builder sites. Yo, I want to... Okay. That 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 city, the city art installation in like the middle of uh, Nevada. Yes. Oh, they're so bad. I want to like. That looks in. so fucking cool. Uh, I don't care if they shoot me. I want to go in and wander around the labyrinth that they've built out of dirt. It sounds so awesome. Bad. It sounds so cool. I want to go to it so bad. People a year go into the dirt labyrinth, and I I'm so mad about it. It's a I want to be allowed into the dirt labyrinth. <laughs> I want to win the Dirt Labyrinth lottery. <laughs> I want to win Dirt Labyrinth. Give me Dirt Labyrinth. Give me Dirt Labyrinth, please. Hard to see. Crown hidden in forest. Dangerous. I I love the dangerous bug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You you have to include a dangerous bug. I have to, I have to include a deadly and dangerous bug. All right. So, okay, where where are you going to put the de the deadly and dangerous bug? So, I I think this in the background is all going to be trees as well. So, I think there will be sort of like a dangerous bug crawling out into the into the clearing towards the viewer as if as if you are like viewing this right now. This this card is directly talking to you. Okay, so that that dot right there is going to be the dangerous bug. A dangerous bug is attacking and I think on on the ground, maybe perched on a rock or something, will be a crown, as as if a king has lost a crown in this forest, Ooh, or, or okay. a prince you has wanna, lost it. You want to mirror it. You want to put it parallel with the, parallel the dangerous to the bug. bug. Okay. Yeah. What's okay. The, what's the like, feel of the card that you want? I think it's like a foreboding card. It's like mm. it's like when an when a task or idea is seemingly impassable. I really like the idea of of trees as a mountain range in the background, like a, like obscuring a, like the sky. A bigger than you, sort of thing that it's uh, telling you is that. Sorry, what? I think you cut out. You want the card to kind of be telling you this is bigger than you, or what's the what's the like. Some, yeah, um, yeah, something you like, know, like, like, that, like at, at the core of this um, mm. that you want to build out from. I think it is, I think it's like, hmm. Yeah, yeah, an idea that's grown out of hand, feature creep, sort of, sort of the idea that either, okay, okay. Either the idea is already too large, or the idea is ahead of you. That's what the crown and the bug symbolize. The okay. bug is in front of you because it's the idea that this is an upcoming challenge. The mm -hmm. crown, on the other hand, is that's your crown. You already lost it because this was your idea. And right. your idea is already way too big. This is your stupid forest. This is you your dumb forest. Crown in it. You're, and we're gonna kill you. 
<laughs> this bug is gonna kill you because it's dangerous. <laughs> and so, by I'm the way, it. we've hired this bug to kill you. <laughs> Just, okay. What kind of bug is it? Is it the weird bug in charge of the nighttime, or? Well, that's a good one. I was thinking they maybe. Do like that. I was thinking a ladybug or a rhinoceros beetle. I'm, Beetles I are maybe a... in connection with tarot. Uh, yeah, beetles are good. Like the moon card is where you'll see beetles a lot. That's just because like. Okay, hold on. Yeah, maybe. Because uh... beetles are usually shiny, like the sun, so they're associated with God. Maybe it is an emerald beetle, because green is closer to air than water is. I think. Hmm. Oh, and it's ideas. Unless it's ideas. unless it's a blue beetle to represent like that. It's emotional. Like the okay, if the beetle is representing the task that is ahead of you, like a tidal wave then it makes sense for it to be blue, actually. Like a scarab. If you, if you made the bug brown or yellow, that could make it associated with pentacles. And it could be like, no, there's, liter there's a literal bug coming to kill you. <laughs> in, in my brain, yellow is more air. Yellow oh, is yeah, more that, air. Oh yeah, that is okay. true. I'm, I'm leaning towards blue because I like the idea of it being an, an emotional uh hardship more so than a literal one the idea it's that a dangerous uh, emotion like, bug like, like, only <laughs> like only like like uh like a kind of like um emotional thing to really provide that scale you know like getting yeah big ideas is is more like it's, it's not like as scary as like something like actually coming you know to affect you in a, in a type of Right, right. Some it's, it's, it's at the scale that you're talking about. Only, only an existential threat could match you. Also, like, mm -hmm. still very like fluid and, and like like in, like not handleable. Yeah, I'm liking it. I think we're going for blue beetle here. Okay, okay. Let's go for blue beetle. This it's bug is going to bully you. That's not going to happen. And this is the bug in charge of the nighttime. It's an existential bug. <laughs> and by the way, chat. Get scared of the existential bug. And now, for the art portion of the stream, this we will is, this be... This is what I'm always telling people, to, like, stay away from, uh... Like, <laughs> bugs. Ultra, you know? The Get scared of bugs. The, the existential bug, the virus of existentialism, has polluted my, like, my precious French intellectuals. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Oh man, they're they're gonna start sharing course. atheist texts and start a secret society or something. Let's start with Are you the in sky. Blender? I am. I'm in Blender at the Shit. moment. Okay. Wait, Ooh. This is gonna be a 3D card. Shadows while you're making stuff. Sorry, what? They have active shadows while you're making stuff. That's fucked yep. up. I should get Blender. Why am I using Maya? <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Sidestepping uh, Esoterica for just a moment. I entirely recommend Blender way more than Maya. All of my friends who have used Maya have, have slammed their head against a wall. I, I have cried over Maya more than I have cried over any computer thing ever. I've never been this frustrated with any device in my life my than God. I am with my, my computer trying to make something work on maya it's like uh it's it, it, it's a it's a program designed exclusively to produce heartbreak <laughs> <laughs> okay now much like this evil bug much like the bug of heartbreak the only reason to use maya is if you are in a pro uh, professional animation studio yes but the reason professional animation studios use that is because they just like Autodesk gets contracts is what they do. That's yeah. Their business. Yeah. They, 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 they force universities to teach their shitty software, then they force businesses to use their shitty software, and they're like, "Well, it's the software everyone uses, so blah blah blah." Like, because of that, like, it's so frustrating. Um, and like they're like, "Why?" You, when people ask like, "Why can't we use Blender?" They're like, "That's just the industry standard." It's like, "Why is that the industry standard?" Like, it can change. You know that. Like, it's right. not a very old industry. It's not like it's not like it's not like we're fucking trains. <laughs> it's not like we're trains, and we have to change every 
fucking uh like coupling in order to make the the the, 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 the trains run together we don't right. have to like, like you can re- click a button on a computer and download a new thing. <laughs> Question. Thing and download a new thing. Did you say that yellow was air to you, intellectual? Yeah, but yellow and green are both appropriate. So yellow like, and not... green are both appropriate. Okay, I like yeah. yellow because somebody in the chat... Hold on, let me scroll up. Uh, Grinning Reaper Black Pearl said, There should be a path that just loops around the tree because you're not going anywhere. I really like that. Oh, so I'm gonna, yeah. I, I'm gonna I make a little... I a circular path around it because of like a... Like... You know, the idea that someone's cir- circling it. Like, yeah. Really, really, um, there you go. Now you guys are thinking like wizards. <laughs> if we're in a stone circle, there's, you know, what you do in stone circles is you walk in a circle. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot okay. of magic, walking in a circle. <laughs> okay. Magic is about walking in a circle so, uh, so expertly that God says hello. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> You know about Honey the Circle Maker, right? No. Him. Where did I know him from? Oh, um, he's a he's like a C list mm-hmm. ancient Jewish mystic. He's he's my favorite Jewish mystic. But, His yeah, whole thing you know, like, was that he Jesus would draw the circles or whatever is because of that guy's myths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would he would <laughs> his Jewish Rip Van Winkle. Um, what he would do is he would draw circles on the ground and then he would say, God, I'm not going to leave this circle until it rains. And then he basically just would yell at God until it rained and then he would leave the circle and go, thank you. <laughs> Which is like, I, I love him because that's like so not how anything else in Jewish mysticism <laughs> works ever. He's like such an outlier. Yeah, wait, you can't like coerce God to do shit. Like, yeah, like that. That's like explicitly doesn't work in Judaism. That's like a, like like Eliezer got fucked up for that. Like you know, like like the the, the Torah is not in heaven story or whatever, right? Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Where like everyone's debating, and then like he's like, "Well, I'm right, and God knows I'm right." And he's gonna send down an angel to say that I'm right, and then like the angels come down and is like, "Eliezer's right," and then um, uh, fucking um. But they're like, no, we're not done debating, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. Like, at first, it's like some sort of sign, like something's going to break or whatever. And then, like, it's like, oh, the, um, the, the walls are going to cave in and the walls bend. And because mm-hmm. God's like, you know, Eliezer's right, guys. This is the correct interpretation. But then, like, finally, like, it's like God's there. And then the, they're like, uh, no, we're not. Like, you gave the Torah to us. You don't get to decide. Like, it's not yours anymore. The Torah is not in heaven. Is the famous quote from that. Um, you know, it's not. It's not right, yours. Right. They're like, no, we get to decide what it means. To interpret, and you're taking this from us. It's not like you're, you. You don't get that anymore because you gave it to us. It's human's job to interpret the Torah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're not done debating. Um, <laughs> and right, I, it's I, still I, two against one, Dickwad. He he like. Like at the end of the story, Eliezer is like, like when when they when they do the epic clapback against God's angel or God or however the story goes, like Eliezer gets his comeuppance and loses, and I think he is, something bad happens to him or whatever. But um, uh, it's uh, you know that's 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 normally how things. Right, right. It's ex- you can't you, you can't coerce God. God. That type of way, but like you, you know, like um, uh, th- 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 there's a very like strict and like literal like way of going about things that you're not supposed to interfere with, and like if either God or man interferes with like their like duties it's 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 a bad but he's just like whatever i'm gonna change the weather by standing in a circle and yelling really right he's just like no i'm gonna do the like weird christian charismatic thing and it became like the basis of like all christian like mysticism from that period like oh no that's dope actually I, i like these the christians love their uh their big performative acts of like communication with god in the sense where it's like literally theatrical of like I'm I'm going to work myself into a frenzy so I can get closer to God. James, I have a question. Yeah. Do you want to do some tree symbolism? Ooh, what do you mean? What kind of tree is this? I a... don't know. Do you have a favorite type of tree? Hmm. I think probably willow trees. 
That's a very pregnant with symbolism type of tree, and you're already okay. in a very good shape for that. Like, so if you look up like a, a crooked willow or like a what's what's it called? Something tortuoso. The what's the scientific name for willow? Someone a knows this. Crooked willow. Oh, I'm a wizard, not a botanist. The crooked okay, willow. The cruel willow. <laughs> the cruel willow tree. I'm well, getting pictures of barns. Hmm. Not a the, tree. Uh, the 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 cru like you can't find like a crooked willow tree. The the ones with the like curly branches. I got um this. Oh, Salix tortuosa. Is that what it is? Look up Salix Tortuosa. S A Salix Tortuosa. Salix Tor. That is a good. That is a good uh, example of a willow, though. That's a really oh. nice. Do you like your tree? Okay. Interesting. There's a lot of different willow trees. Okay. 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 Uh, Here's saying it's a corkscrew willow. Is that the one that I'm thinking of? Are you thinking of that or corkscrew? I don't know willow? enough about trees. That might be it, but I yeah, the branches look curlier than uh, is typical. Oh, okay. I'm I'm see. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Here is it this? Yeah, that's what I think so. Okay. There you go. What I think of. Now, that's pretty. Now, chat. Is... Look at this freak. You could just highlight the rings and like move them all in one direction and then yeah. another. Like, like every other ring you highlight in order to get the zigzag. Interesting. Okay. That's yeah. real cool. I also really like how that looks like veins. Sorry, Iron Shrike, don't do that to a tree. Interesting though. Hmm. Someone says, yo, I, like I think that pregnant. Yep. <laughs> That's what Iron Shrike said. This thing is so <laughs> pregnant with symbolism. Okay. Every okay. time I drink a Dr. Pepper, I get so pregnant. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> now, what does the. I okay. am drinking a Dr. Pepper cream soda version. Oh. Um, oh, it's good. It's like a. It's like. Too good. What does it symbolize? Um. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of like, like a, like a practical luxury. That's what, that's what Dr. Pepper. There you go. Called. A pract, a, 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 a material luxury, a very, a very down to earth practical luxury. Yeah. It's a, you know, like a Dr. Pepper cream soda is like a pair of red wing shoes. Right. It, it's the, the, the working man's treat. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Now, exactly. Okay. So now, I'm, now we know that the corkscrew willow symbolizes the vanilla Dr. Pepper. Something I'm struggling with with the vanilla Dr. Pepper tree is there's no pictures of the trunk of the corkscrew willow. Everyone's just got these fucking analog horror ass. Oh, I captured part of the tree. Where the hell I don't, the trunk of it the is not willow. known. It is not known. It has never been recorded. <laughs> they, move, they move too fast. No survivors have recorded such a sight. By the way, I could not find those Pamela Coleman Smith production stills. I know they're out there. Like, there are photos of the the models for when they were making the original Rider White deck. Mm -hmm. But, like, I can't find them. Okay. Huh, well... If you ever do, like, that sounds fascinating. I'd be interested. Here. I think... Maybe if I type in Rider White original photos. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. They've got kind of a... Yeah. They, they split off way too early for a tree. Okay. Yeah, so kind of a pervert <laughs> tree. Sure. Yeah, they're fucked up and pervert. <laughs> Deviated perverts. <laughs> Deviants. <laughs> The Deviant Dr. Pepper Tree, <laughs> vanilla type. <laughs> the Deviant Dr. Pepper Tree. <laughs> okay, that was the wrong type of sphere. Get in here, UV sphere, my best friend in the whole world. All right. 
grab. Yeah. So, so why why a willow tree specifically? Let's talk about the symbology here. What are of all the trees that we could have picked? Why, why the why the the Dr Pepper vanilla willow tree? Now, I think me visually, I'm not sure what the Dr Pepper vanilla willow tree is supposed to symbolize, but I really like how it is a bit of an oh, ominous oh. freak of a tree. Um as yeah. as we look at it on the um reference images that shit's weird trees don't do that they're not supposed to it isn't natural for them i really like mm. the sort of like leaning into the you're you're in a, a forest of like pine tree things and there's mm -hmm. just this one weird tree in front of you like this like almost like a mental roadblock of a tree Ah, there you go. Good thinking. <laughs> the corkscrew willow is a great tree for me to hide behind. Signed, the unscrupulous Hydra. <laughs> Thank you, unscrupulous Hydra. <laughs> I'll read out all the donations at the end, y'all. <laughs> I I thought when you started saying Hydra, I was like, like you were going to say more words that involved hiding, and I was just thinking about like hiding hider, greedy grinner. <laughs> <laughs> the hiding hydra. The it's silly. sneaking hydra. The sneaking slipper. Okay. Control C B G R Z. Also, everyone, just to remind you, I'm I'm promoting my uh I'm promoting my new tarot deck partially with this stream. And you can use command exclamation point tarot to go check that shit out. Give I've I've been getting <laughs> I've been getting updates from the artist over these last couple of days, and they look fucking incredible. And I'm not just, I know it sounds like I'm saying that because <laughs> I want you to buy my tarot deck, and I am, make no mistake, but also they look dope as hell, and it's awesome. <laughs> and I'm really, it's really crazy that I get to do some shit like this. I'm stoked. I spent a long time on it, and hey, it's as a little thank you for for everyone who's stuck on the the stream this while. I will uh, I will say, because of how successful that this this third deck has been, I I am gonna try something a little ambitious for my next tarot project, and I, I'm gonna design an entirely new deck. It's not gonna be like, it's not gonna be the normal tarot like my not gonna be my previous design. I, I'm gonna do something a little little interesting and uh, I'll, I'll say it here um, just because there aren't like I'll say it here I'm I'm currently in the process of designing a tarot deck like a, a full-fledged divination deck that can also be played like a CCG <laughs> because I have I have all of these occultist friends that like know a shitload about tarot symbology and uh, I have a bunch of friends that are like play professional card games, like professional Yu-Gi-Oh and shit like that. And I'm getting every, I'm trying to get everyone to work together into making something that is like easy, both easy to pick up and like very difficult. I want it to be like a good collectible card game, and I want it to be a good like magical tool. I so the the central concept of it is that I don't want the cards to have any text on them at all like they have maybe a name and that's it and there's no you don't i don't want you to play with any counters or any shit like that it, there's no like put a poison counter on your shit or like you know t spawn a token card or whatever we're, we're trying to design it from the ground up so that the only things that you need to use it are basically your 60 cards and the other person's 60 cards and we're we're trying to design it so that like there's an element of customizability to it. So like not only not only do the different cards in the deck represent like in the same sense as the tarot where they represent different aspects of your inner self, I want I want there to be an element where you can kind of determine like the cards that you put in your deck represent you specifically in some way. And the idea being that as you play as you play the a game, it tells it tells a story with the tarot symbology. So, 
Yeah, hell yeah. I am very excited for that project, for the record. Yeah. If, if I can make my opinion known, I am yeah, incredibly yeah. excited. Uh, uh, Sanity and I have been, like, texting up a storm about it. We want <laughs> to, like, actually have a call some night where we can... Like, we're we're almost to the point where we can build a prototype in a... Tabletop a sim. Tabletop sim, yeah. Seriously so excited for that. Please let me play test. Literally. <laughs> yeah, plays the fool in attack position. Like, literally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a species of willow that uh, Native Americans smoked as a substitute for tobacco. Huh. Oh, cool. I mean, they smoked the bark of Salix humilla. Which now I want to try. Right. It's like, I didn't know that there was like a cigarette, the cigarette tree. <laughs> the tree. Um, three to the Chat, one to the one Go, to the go three. find us a cigarette tree. <laughs> Is there going to be international sh shipping for the tarot? And if so, do you have an estimate on pricing? I am not entirely sure. That's probably going to be more of a question for, uh, for my publisher. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Seven. Um, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? The Greeks associated uh, Willow with the underworld. The Chthonic, like... Does it have, like, deep roots or something? It might. Um, <laughs> it is not known. It is not known. No one's ever <laughs> seen the trunk. <laughs> they move too fast. Like, I couldn't tell you about the root systems of most trees. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is okay. We are wizards, not botanists. Hazard, like, if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that the root system of a willow is not very deep because it's always very close to water. Um, yeah, true. So I would say it's probably spread out more. Hmm. I've trapped these two wizards in a room until they teach me about plants, and what happened um. next will shock you. <laughs> they didn't know anything. <laughs> they didn't know shit. I don't know shit about fuck. Don't ask me nothing. Let's see. <laughs> I really like your concept for a 3D tarot card. This is looking really neat. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Okay. What are these? Did you have to download these effects, or did they just come on? Uh... I I bought these right before the stream because I realized a 3D card would actually be pretty cool. People sell um all kinds of um uh, neat shaders and stuff on the Blender Marketplace. Yeah, because these shaders actually look excellent. Oh, if you could rotate the light and get like more contrast mm -hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yup. Yup. That looks so cool. Right. Uh. You can anything with this. Like I could even like I could turn this into a little GIF and post it later with just the light going around like it's the sun rising oh, and setting. Like it's everything everywhere all at once. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Like there in anything go. everywhere. Wait, hold on. Actually, I need to test these because these are the these are the first shaders that okay, not the first shaders I've done. Oh, <laughs> Whoa. So, uh, here's some characteristics. According to Daniel Schulke of uh of willow like mutability porosity immersion penetration osmosis capriciousness longing licentiousness feral libido swaying limbs fulsome advances fiery upwellings and feminine wiles so also okay okay the the, the tree is also associated with like lilith and with like nymphs and oh it's a seductress yeah, well, it's also, like, considered kind of dangerous in that way. Like, it's Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, okay. Oh, so it really is I, pregnant. I, which I think fits the, like, the, the, like, dark forest, like, sucking you in to something you weren't expecting, like, uh, you know. It works rather well. Okay, so oh, yeah. that is... Whoa, oh, that shader's dope. Right? Tusks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Shrike, I'm glad that you want to fuck my tree. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, man. Really cool. You're always looking out for me. Got your back, bud. 
I have so Speaking many allergies to so many trees, but I'm glad willow isn't one of them. Speaking as someone with an allergy to willow trees, yeah, the fuck, these trees are dangerous, bad times. Like, is that a, a legitimately, like, fatal allergy? Or, or can you have a fatal allergy to a willow tree? If so, I'm so sorry, that sounds scary. Yeah. You can die of the Dr. Pepper sex tree. <laughs> What okay? What are the twenty like the twenty three flavors in Dr Pepper? Are uh, let me let me look it up. Oh yeah, Death. <laughs> the chariot. <laughs> Wait, yeah, it's the, it's the twenty. It's, it's the twenty two meat arcana plus this tree. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we, we found we the secret to... flavor. Quick, go cook up some Dr Pepper. <laughs> we have, so uh, original is obviously the fool. That's that seems true enough. Yeah, okay. Amaretto, almond, blackberry, black licorice, carrot, clove, cherry, caramel, cola, ginger, juniper, lemon, molasses, nutmeg, orange, prune, plum, pepper, root beer, rum, raspberry, tomato, and vanilla. Huh. I, and there's all a... at the same time. I, I heard someone say there's so many non-binary people that go into a single can of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yeah, God. Chat, have the... you thought of the real cost? There's a coriander flavored one. That that cannot be. CT, you're just not looking at like real things that exist in this world. I. All right, one second, anyone... chat. Cola, cherry, licorice, amaretto, apricot. Cardamom. Are you Birch being able to, like, and prickly ash? Hold your huh. thumbnail in the uh, in the blender frame, like the thumbnail sketch you did on Photoshop. Oh, oh um, God. yeah. Let me see. Like, you, you can, like, oh, oh. Someone, someone in chat asked um, if this was my process for designing the normal tarot, and it kind of, it kind of was. Like I was specifically, like, okay. My process for designing the normal tarot was I wanted something... I actually started with the divination method that I wanted. Like, I specifically wanted a deck that could be read like poker hands. So it was less that, like... I thought of it much less as, like, what individual cards meant and what, uh, like, three to five card spreads would mean. So I kind of designed it so that each, each card in the normal tarot was kind of a story beat or uh, an action. Like, they're all kind of predicated on a particular kind of change or result that, like, leads from one to the one to the next. Why the name Normal Tarot? Because of my old blog, which was just normal horoscopes. Horoscopes, yeah. Um, but no, I specifically wanted something that could be read more... I mean, holistically sounds like a nothing word, but it's like I wanted something that could be read as multi-card spreads right. rather than individual cards. And so, because of that, the pip cards, each one is a, like, the, each suit is a season, right? And so they all kind of lead sequentially into the next one. So there's, like, they, like, chronologically, almost, where they're, like, each season is a story. Like, I believe, like, spring is going on a journey, and winter is, like, bedding down for, bedding down for hardship, and so on and so forth. Ooh, seasonal symbolism is something that is really underutilized in tarot, even though it fits perfectly. It does! Like, I was kind of surprised that very few people had, had done that. And it's something that, like, has been around for, you know, longer than the tarot, you know, that, like, that ancient Greek, like, floor mosaic where it's, like, the personified seasons in their little cute non-binary outfits. Yeah! Um, yeah, yeah, yeah! You know that you know the exact one. I need to. Yes. Okay, I've got to find it. I got to find it. Yeah, we have to. I was gonna. I was just gonna ask you to. The Hore. Um. What did you call them? <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah, yeah, that. and then I also had instead of major arcana, I had these kind of like major sports, kind of like they're. There's like a set of three cards, and then a set of four cards, and then a set of five cards. There's like three omens, five books, six, uh, like seven moons, like so and so. So 
and I wanted it so that I actually started so that um, each season is 16 is 16 cards. So there's like a one through 10 and there's like three knights and three queens. And the the queens them like the knights and queens are all their own little contained stories. Like it goes night one, night two, night three, and then it's like there's a little bit of Hecate imagery with the queens where they're like it's like youth, prime, and elderly. In the sense where they're like they all have kind of this cro cyclical chronological element of like a person at a particular <laughs> point in their life or a particular point in their story. Um. And then I wanted it so that the card itself had 99 cards. So I I filled out the uh, I filled out the rest of the deck so that I would have exactly that many because it was like numerologically satisfying to me. 99 just felt like the correct number. I need I need to look at your deck someday. Like I haven't I don't have a copy. So I like is, okay. Are there scams? You don't have a, you don't have a copy. I'll just send you one, man. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. yeah I. I I still have a bunch of like I still have a bunch of the promo copies that were given to me by the publisher that I will I'll just like send you one. It's it's um, no trouble, girl. So oh thank you. Uh most of the most of the Hore um mosaics are all like like headshots. They're like bust shots of the the Hore in squares. The hmm. the mosaic I am thinking of um has cute little um like full body mosaics of each of them and like you know like the uh i think like the spring is like blowing what, okay am i thinking actually of a of a mosaic of the 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 winds hmm Omens, four maidens, no, five like, dreams, like, six books, seven. I just hmm? have fifty thousand images on my phone. Um, this is the way. And uh, like nothing can be done about this. Oh, if I type in Hore mosaic, I just get a bunch of pictures of horse mosaics because Google thinks I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, did you? You probably meant horses. <laughs> yup, searching about horses again. We know. Yup, looking up horses. I do, no, I, I do this though sometimes, which is the problem, you know. Right. No, it's like designing designing my tarot deck was like one of the one of the things that like it's like I was interested in magic, but then that was one of the things that was like, oh, there's a lot here that is well, like there's a, there's so much here for me to like learn and play with and like comment I, on. I have not like I started a tarot deck like years ago. But then, like, I'm like, oh, I don't want it to be bullshit. It's, you know, I want to, like, make this art project actually kind of authentic. And then I, like, started reading about tarot and I, like, got sucked back into magic. Because, you know, I was, like, a chaos right. person mm. um, for a while. But I didn't understand any, like, sort of symbolic languages or anything. Um, and then went down and a in, rabbit hole. In terms of symbolic it, language, it's... it's Lema. Yeah. No, that makes a that makes a ton of sense. It, it's like it really, like tarot is kind of the thing that I recommend to like a lot of people interested in magic. Where it's like, because once you understand tarot, you can speak the rest of magic because it's it's full of all the other like stuff that you're going to need to use elemental, astrological, um, right? Well, and it and, teaches uh, you how to like what we were talking about earlier. It teaches you to think like a wizard, where it's like you kind of think in these these relationships and concepts and representations rather than in literal words and concepts it, it turns your brain mercurial it does it does that's a very good way of, of putting it I actually that's kind of what i wanted to do for my by my new deck i i specifically wanted it so that the cards have no text on them but it comes with like an instruction booklet that explains all of the symbology so if, if you want to actually play the game you need to under you need to be able to read the symbology at a glance. So it's like, oh, this card this card deals like however much damage a card deals is depicted by how many swords they're carrying in the art. Oh, that's and cute. So that way it literally forces you as part of the game to engage with the esoteric symbology so that you can 
So that way, the more that you learn about it, you can actually kind of, you can start man, like literally manipulating it as you play with the deck. Like I, I want it to be something that literally teaches you. I, I want it to be a teaching tool for esoteric symbology. I really like that. Hmm. I found a cool astrological mosaic. Yay, we love mosaics. At this point right now, I am just searching on my own blog. <laughs> uh, because search engines have become so useless. Oh my god, seriously. This, like, you know, Google Scholar is useful for finding scholarly articles or, like, books sometimes, but, mm -hmm. like, I... I, am I stupid or like are they deliberately just not letting us find anything anymore? No, yeah, literally, I, it, it has actually gotten like actively like really I'm worse. Not just, no, you're not crazy. It's actually gotten worse. Like I know that like it's that's true to an extent. Like it's in shitified with ads and stuff. But like, like it seems like nothing is like exists anymore. Like there's not even like. Like real websites anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. seriously. They all if, went. If you're a real website, you have to have an app for it, you know? And if you try to search for any website, they're like, I don't think you know what this is. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist. So you should buy something. Like And it's like it's like, oh you're looking up trees? Those don't exist. Get the tree app. <laughs> for real. Ugh. Like in order to like navigate anything like you have to have like a team of like dedicated people who want like something to be accessible and out there and if you don't then you have to become that person which mm -hmm. sucks so much sucks just I feel like esoteric symbology is a great way to get people more into the idea of symbolism and art too i feel like people are scared to acknowledge it in fear of being too pretentious when symbolism and analyzing it is just really fun yeah honestly i was actually kind of hoping that like the deck would have a bit of an inverse relationship to the rule book so that it's like i kind of want to i want to make it so that people get i want to make it so that like looking through the book is fun and it kind of gets people into the idea of like oh researching these like researching texts is itself pretty fun it's super fun like i think people need to i think school beats out of people like the kind of creativity and like intuitive like like not intuitive um uh like like studious um process it because it because it makes it so kind of transactional that you can't yeah it makes it it, it makes it a chore you can't explore you're like this is something to be done in the minimum amount of time and effort mm -hmm. possible to mm -hmm. to continue whereas like I, I i love doing this shit all day it's the only thing i do all day it's the only thing you do i mean Kind of. I I like to play video games, but I'm usually listening to an audiobook while I'm playing. I for, for the first like three months of my job, I was just listening to like spiritual and esoteric audio books and lectures. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. But that like gets to your noggin like 10 hours it does. 10 hours of like listening to like like someone talk about medieval uh, tantric texts and like cross comparing the agamas and then like you have to talk to normal people about courage <laughs> or... yeah it all starts to blend together and you're like did you know that one of the one of the demons in the testament of solomon was actually the ghost of a nephilim <laughs> and they're like that'll be 485 <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I've been so I, I I got sucked in back into like because of the so I'm I'm either like listening to um, audiobooks or podcasts. I listen to a lot of Mormon stories podcasts, the John DeLynn Mormon stories podcast, and like they were mm -hmm. covering the Jody Hildebrandt saga. Then I like went down the whole like Ruby Frankie Jody Hildebrandt like 
rabbit hole of like all the facts about that case and it is beyond insane like the it's church crazy yeah actually sending people to this this like lady who was like trying to form a cult like and then like starving children and it's, like it's it's nuts um, well and this is just like like regular behavior for them like you know the big like uh, ritual sex abuse case in utah that's like still ongoing oh yeah yeah also like one of like the church's like conversion therapy therapist programs so like she's kind of one of those um but, oh yeah uh, definitely yeah, and then, like I, so i got sucked into jody hildebrandt and then i got sucked into true crime for like a week mm -hmm. um which has was bad for me and i stopped doing that but like i don't think i'll ever recover because my i'm now i'm now completely normal again <laughs> right um, don't worry yeah. i am normal again i, I have been re-educated I think true crime makes you like into like a like like Starbucks target demographic if you watch like one true crime video. It does like it but it makes you like the paranoid version of that. Right. Yeah. Well, no, you're paranoid because you're you're drinking a lot of coffee and listening to podcasts about murder every single day. Yes. Um, <laughs> and some sometimes like people are like you know, I I'll only hit the pen and drink a coffee and then uh, listen to to, to, to to podcasts about people that are my shape and size being dismembered for eight hours and wonder why I'm uh, full of anxiety. Right. It's like that. It's certainly not helping, is it? <laughs> um, Ugly Melon, I just popped in to see how things are going and holy crap, you're in Blender now, the most esoteric of 3D modeling programs. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we picked it. It's you all part of the plan. You must consult the tomes if you wish to learn Blender. <laughs> Wait, no. yeah, Jamie, how did you learn Blender? Is it just trial and error um, and tutorials, or like, did you? I took did Adderall. You know, find a good class and teacher or anything. I got Adderall and then I learned it real good. No, yeah, um, basically, uh, uh literally, there were just these like online courses for um like 20 30 bucks that were like uh we'll teach you a uh, blender but uh uh it's today only the sale ends today because our our class is 20 bucks right now but as soon it's gonna be 200 dollars oh so buy today but literally yeah, no, if you just like that's so clear sales funnel that like yeah like i i remember doing this at my door-to-door -door job <laughs> Uh, it um, literally was a case where if you cleared your cookies, you have to make like don't tell like like there is no later. Yeah, buy or die. Like, we'll be I, back uh, next we'll week. Um, I I uh, do you know CT? Do you know who Jason Louv is? Uh, sounds familiar, but not ringing a bell. Okay, he was like. One of Genesis P. Orridge's protégés, he has an online course, and oh. I was really considering doing it because he, like, is someone who- he wrote John D. in the Empire of Angels. That's another oh! Yeah. That's where I've heard that name before! Okay, yes! Yes, I do know who this is! <laughs> yeah, he's a weirdo, but also, like, does know what he's talking about when it comes to magic. Um, yes. As far as his videos seem to convey. Um, but I was so turned off by like how salesy like because i was doing the sales job at the time he was like announcing his like course mm -hmm. um and i was so turned off by how like like typical like uh online course sales funnel this is mm -hmm. and like he's worked in advertising so he like knows the like right right the, it's so it sounds like he's trying to get you to join wizard team 10 or whatever yeah it just didn't seem right even though like so like like I, okay. Bailey J is one of his students. Fascinating. I love her. Well, good for her. <laughs> yeah, she's 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 big on like, occultism. Huh. Hey. River um, Sparks. Thanks for the long subscription. Sure, I think one of my boyfriends like shared a Coachella tent with Bailey J. Like they just ended up in like the same larger tent or something. Okay. Yeah, it's like um, weird connection. They have like a gay camp in Coachella. I th they might have. <laughs> That's entirely possible. 
<laughs> like it's, it's, they've separated the gays. Right, right. Welcome to gay Coachella. <laughs> the ethics sound dubious. <laughs> Welcome to blow Chella. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. How would how would gay Coachella be different? I don't know. Like instead of Molly, it's all ketamine. That's not different. Never mind. That's just a it doesn't, Yeah, that's just yeah. like it's not too different. Those circles cross over a lot. Yeah. What is the, what's the general feeling on companies like Biddy Tarot? Like, honestly, I would be lying. It like okay. If there's some occultist that says like, oh no, I've never like, I've never like Googled and like used Biddy Tarot to like look up the meaning of a tarot card quickly, that person is fucking lying to you. <laughs> I don't know because they're- CT, they I've never heard of this. Okay, no, 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 you have. If you Google any tarot card, there's like a solid chance that they're gonna be the, that like Biddy Tarot is the top result. Like whenever Google has like a suggested like, oh, here's what this tarot card means. It's usually pulled from the Biddy Tarot website. Like, 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 like online t online talk about tarot is so initiative that I don't touch, like, if I'm looking up tarot, I'm looking up a specific card by a specific artist so I can show someone something I already know about it. Yes. I'm not Googling individual cards unless I'm trying to, like, cross-compare. Yeah, yeah. Work. If you've, if you've ever Googled the individual meaning of a card, you have, you have read, you've read from either Biddy Tarot or, uh, what's the other one? Like, Labyrinth something? I have a... Uh, but whatever. Um, it's I, So it's like, have, the like, thing about Biddy Tarot is that they're actually like, uh, fine. Uh, Brynthos, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I don't, Biddy Tarot is like, they're clearly like a search engine optimization to hell. Like they, they com clearly just dominate the, the, the search engine, but their takes on the cards like aren't bad. So it's like, you're not fucking anything up googling like using them as a, a info source i wouldn't like buy anything from them but they're not like malicious in the way that a lot of those companies are so yeah there's my take hmm. like anytime i think about tarot i just think about like like the fraterach diagrams and i just i want to like start like info dumping in like, <laughs> a unhealthy way you know there there is so much there is so much well because like there's those like when you connect like the four trees and then you get like all sorry <laughs> how is the uh how, how is it going james i am they they gave me one perfect corkscrew and now they won't give me shit Mm -hmm. But, James, just duplicate it. Uh, no, I duplicated those. I want to make a, a different shape for the other leaves. I'm trying to make the uh, same corkscrew applied to a different shape is my issue. And it's just fighting me. I'm new to Blender. I was going to say, speaking of leaves, on, like, that Ace of Wands card, there's those, like, the floating leaves that are kind of in the, like... The oh, yeah, yeah. The bottom shape. Uh, that's because of the, the Marseille deck, uh, which has a bunch oh, of, like, yeah. lettering none, which is that shape as well. It's the kind of, like, the, the singularity, the, like, point, the, like, first kind of initial spark that, out of which everything kind of explodes, which is, um... Hmm... Uh, I mean, I could, I could, I could go on about it. I could go on about individual cards and letters, but um, my uh, dang, I think working at a factory maybe messes with your brain a lot. <laughs> Aww. Just like all the I time like, in the world to fill up on information. I become like three times as ADHD by the end of the day, just because I'm like physically used up. And oh your gosh, brain and your body are connected. That can be good for streams sometimes. Like, sometimes you just need a ramble about something. Just have a kind of... No noggin. Ugh, I love this shiny sphere and the primer sphere. <laughs> Play toys. <laughs> I've... 
I've been like saying, so this is what I do like physically in the real world. I, I, I've been like sculpting shit. I've been, this today I've been like sculpting saddles. Huh. Huh. So we, we mill them on the, on the CNC router. We have a big giant CNC machine uh, that mills giant blocks of styrofoam into the perfect shape. And then the parts of it that we don't make out of styrofoam, we will 3D print and then we will glue them together and file them down and sand them and putty the, the parts that are missing into place and all of that shit. Um, uh, and then, then we take a, we take casts of that shit and turn it into bronze statues or send it to whoever so that they can like wrap it in stuff. I don't know. Neat. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, My main deck is Terror of the Divine, which focuses on a ton of mythology, folklore, and fairy tales and its symbolism. So if you like those, big recommendation. Huh. Hell yeah. I... Honestly, I would love to do like a like a stream where people recommend tarot decks, and I just like look at the fucking cards and I see if I would actually <laughs> like them. And, uh, we, we like rate them on a scale of one to ten. A tier list. Wait, wait, no, no, no. Like, uh, what are those charts where they're like five points, and then each of them is like a pointy like zigzag? To, like, oh the, yeah, the... it's on like a, oh. a pentagon where it's like how how yeah. people they, they have in shown in animes measure their powers. Yeah. yeah. yeah cards in naruto yeah 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 um that's what i want to do i want to like measure it by like um like spiritual use case artistic prowess uh symbolic coherency fuckability and fun. always important that's the like that's Wait. the that's the scale them needs to be swag <laughs> well, that, that follows under either fuckability or fun, but swag, like, swag is too vague. Right, right. Hey, CT, would you consider the set of traits in Disco Elysium an interesting major arcana to start from? Well, I mean, there's like... There's like four... Aren't there like... Yeah, Disco Elysium ha already has four base stats that kind of map pretty neatly onto the the different tarot symbologies. What if swag was a major arcana? <laughs> what would say it's just like a guy in a supreme hoodie? What would Joe Biden do, huh? <laughs> it's, the, the, the 23rd major arcana is swag. It's Joe Biden in a supreme hoodie with Tim's on. That's uh, it's it's the guy with Gucci, Louis, three box logos and the, <laughs> the, the ski glasses. You know, the video from. Vine. Yeah, yeah. Where he, just, yeah. yes! Where he just goes like, yes! <laughs> he is the swag. He, he is the swag. He doesn't have swag. He's he's a, an incarnation, an emanation of swag. Gucci, Louis, three box logos. Yeah, yeah. Did you, wait, did you say yeah, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's because he says yes, but in like a really weird way. Says it like, he says, yes. it like yes. says it like yes. <laughs> um, remember that like uh, old uh, footage of a I think it was a Kanye concert where like he had a backup singer uh, fall off of the stage like the fool in the tarot, but I think he was just saying yeah. like <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, and it, like yeah. It fades as the mic moves away from his face in just like the perfect way. That's that. <laughs> yeah. That's the fool card. Yeah, yeah, that's the fool. Oh my god. There's a French astrologer who did a thing where you can divine with the cloud cards. Anime fans who can read French. I see. That's clever. Okay, Riley, do you have any opinions on the Sesame Row guy? Do you know about him? I don't know what this is. So okay, there's a there's a dude on TikTok who like there's a, a deck of like Sesame Street cards, and the cards are just stuff like red um, circle, wet, <laughs> pushing, and he does like actually great tarot reader, but he's using the set like Sesame Street deck. It's so good. Yeah, no, he's like he's incredible at 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 card reading. Like I've 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 tried to talk about it on my blog a couple times, and I feel like people think I'm being, like, ironic when I talk about how fucking awesome he is, but no, he's, like, ridiculously skilled at cardomancy. 
You said you said blog in like such a way as I was like that, that, that made me think that you had a live journal or like a, <laughs> else, and I was like, oh, I'd love to read your blog. Then I'm like, oh wait, I read your blog. <laughs> wait, CT has a blog? Oh my gosh, oh, look at it! I oh, dude, you, you have a blog? News newsletter type beat, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> right. join my Substack, like, guys. <laughs> Um, I've read them. I was like, oh, is there like a new like collection of CT things? <laughs> yeah, it's called my Tumblr. It's mainly me posting about T Dick. <laughs> I mean, who can blame you? Let's see. Yo, Let's see. Yeah, I push was, in I the wet. I had yeah, some transgender evening yesterday. I got to see a lot of folk punk. Ooh. Oh, uh, Sister Wife Sex Strike played in Salt Lake yesterday. It was really good. That's cool. I don't know who that is, but that sounds dope. They're a folk punk band, and then uh, yeah, they were really good. I, I love the show. It was really fun. Nice. Alright, I think that tragically, I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this card this stream. That is okay, my friend. We can, yeah, we can absolutely a uh... whole bug, wouldn't you? Wait, give him like six legs and like two eyes, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, James, can we ask you to can we ask you to put a little more spice on that bug before we turn in? Okay, yeah, yeah. I I, I can make a bug and then um uh, uh I'm I'm thinking I might finish this up and post on to Tumblr later this week, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'd like that. I'd, yeah, I'd love to see how it ends up. Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, chat. You have until James finishes the dangerous bug to ask your final questions. <laughs> Lightning round, go. Come on, wizard Q&A, as fast as you can, chat, as or else the devil appears. Well, he's actually already in the tarot. <laughs> Until a <laughs> second devil appears. Until another devil appear. <laughs> Double devil. What is the stupidest interpretation of a card you've ever seen? Oh, gosh. Um... Oh. Hmm. CT, what is your favorite deck besides the one that you've designed? Uh, the Edward Gorey deck with the Waltzing Mouse. That's my favorite <gasps> card in any deck ever. Oh, that sounds cute. Uh, which card do you think fits you best? Uh, uh, Queen of Pentacles. Interesting. CT, what was the most challenging part of making your tarot deck a real thing? Um, it took a long ass time. It took a long ass time. I did not think it would take as long as it fucking did, but coming up with esoteric interpretations of 99 different things took me like a year and a half. That took me so goddamn long. Yeah, that sounds like... Like adding like an additional, did you add an additional 22 cards? No, no, I designed it from the ground up. So I, I did 99, I did 99 cards from the ground up. Shit. So wait, wait, what's the structure of your deck? What's um, the... Okay, it is, it is four suits. Um, it's 10 pip cards and then there's three knights and three queens. And those are the, those are the court decks. So there's six court cards and then there are there are geom there are arithmetically ascending groups of of major arcana so it's like it's like three omens four ladies five books set like so and so up to uh up to the eight moons and then those all together make 99 cards did the work help you grow yes Wait, a, a thousand you, you, percent you did uh the moons around the planets uh, no, no, I did different phases of the lunar cycle. Oh, okay, now I understand, okay. Yeah, three okay. omens, four maidens, five dreams, six books, seven dead kings, and eight moons. What, okay, who were the seven dead kings? Uh, each, each one represents a, uh, so each one represents a, a life cut short, or like, a, a, a story thrown off of its track because of tragedy striking. So there's like, there's like the Frozen King, the Charred King, the Courteous King, like, and e each one rep, like, it's like the Frozen King is like, the Frozen King is like, 
in his art, he's depicted like raising a glass, but he's like he's frozen to death at like a table full of food. So it's like it's like holding on to material pleasures past the point where they they like bring you pleasure and they actually start kind of rotting you spiritually from the inside. And then there's like the Chard King, which is like it's just like a burned skeleton with a crown and it's just like over it's like overwhelming violence that you could not have prepared for. What was the and one before the Chard King? The Frozen King. That would be in like regular tarot language is sort of like six of cups, right? Like the too much of a good thing type. Yeah, yeah. But it's also uh, like it's six it's sweet, over sweet too it, like it's too much of a good thing, but also it's your fault. Yeah, that's well it's uh that's 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 the uh six of cups, is it? Which one is which one is uh which one is the one I'm thinking of? Give me a I'm second. Allow me. Sure. Six of Cups. It's in, in Golden Dawn language, it's referred to as debauch. Mm. Um, I love having a. Uh, it's the Seven of Cups. Okay. Seven of Cups. Okay. Yeah, I love I love the Seven of Cups because like the color harmonies are really disharmonious, so you can tell that like something's wrong with it. On like Lady Lady Frida Harris, no, yeah, Frida Lady Harris is, is is what her name is. How you say it? Mm -hmm. Um, her her color like harmonies and disharmonies um, suit the uh, um. Oh, I think the best way to maybe explore color in the tarot is to explore like the color correspondences of the planets and astrology. Oh uh, yeah. Then, then you can see like where they clash and like what the kind of like meanings is and like like uh navigate right. the uh, the Here, field. Jame, hmm. Jame, how's that bug going? I Show need us that bug. I need legs. Here, I I I think maybe I think maybe we got to be done with the bug, bud. No, it needs legs, and then I'm wrapping no? up. Okay, okay, get legs that bug are, some legs. Legs are not that difficult. I make one, then I copy it five times. Okay. Chat, uh, final lightning round of questions. Go. 1,000 hours blender bug. That's just anything you make in Blender. Just anything you make in Blender. Yeah. 10 um, million polygons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. What? Which what? card is the most non-binary temperance? Done. No, the the world. It's a woman, but she has a dick in the canonically. Um, she's the uh, hermaphrodite. She's the like. Um, so like, I mean, the, like, like, the temperance like, angel is explicitly non-gendered. So is the. Like okay, according to Papu, the 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 world is not is, is has. Uh, titties and a dick. Uh, Ooh, which I, card is misinterpreted the most? Um, probably hmm. death. I would say death. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of ones that people just don't. I think people think that the the three of swords looks really cool because it's like three swords through a heart, and they're like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna. Tattooed on me, but I'm like, that's a that's a thing that I wouldn't want to carry around. Either that's just like a symbol it's, of like bad relationships. Is, is, is yeah, like, it, it's like it's like one of the worst cards in the deck, like explicitly yeah. bad. Like Let's it's see. a cool image, but I like. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to put like, that on my body. I remember like something in like a kind of like vindictive, like oh, I'm not gonna go there again type of way. I'm not. Yet, I, I, why would I? Um, right, right. Here, what's your favorite normal tarot card? And can we treat Caretaker and Okatsu as sort of jokers? Yeah, I explicitly added them as jokers. Um, I think my favorite normal tarot card is the Eight of Winter. It's the one with the deer skeleton. Because it's, um, it, it's the, it's tranquility in death. It, it's, like, it's the, the moment of silence between cycles, where it's like, the last of, the last of your old life has died, but 
there's like a there's a little moment of quiet before your new life has started, and you're you're in that kind of boundary area where nothing's really moving, but there's still things happening in the background. I like that one a lot. It's meditative. I also like the Huntress. Let's see. If you were doing a reading, what would be the meaning of the cards you drew to show off this stream? Oh. Uh, the Magician, the Three of Coins, and the World? No, I think they're asking what are the, like card meanings of the ones that we drew to explain cards? I'm not sure. Let's... let's... Would he tell us what your... Uh, question means? He's witty. Um... Mm. CT, would you say that reading tarot is just improv with symbolic prompting? Not re it's not really. It's like there isn't there's an aspect of theater to it if you're doing it for somebody else, but I, I wouldn't necessarily describe it as improv. It's more, it's, it's like, it's like improv, but the, the relationship is backwards. Instead of, like, you trying to improv something to entertain other people, it's like, the world is improv and you're trying to interpret it into something meaningful. Ooh. The reading arrow is yes and in God. Yes. If you got the opportunity to retroactively change something about the normal tarot, would you and what? Honestly, I would not want to change anything. It's like, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It's like, if... I think the... It would almost... And it would kind of feel like... Fixing something that ain't broke. Like, if there was... If there were any changes that I wanted to make to the normal Tarot, it would be... I would want to go through the deck with a bunch of other occultists and then compound the symbolism. Like, I would want to... I would want to add even more symbolism to the cards. Like, do... Do kind of a second draft, like how, um, but do kind of a second draft in the same way that like Atelia did the first draft and then the Golden Dawn did the second draft. And like the Raider Waite Smith is just like an, an addition to that. Like I would, I would want like other occultists to collaborate on adding to the deck in some way. Which person is Atelia? Uh, he's the he's the guy that first published uh, like how to divine with tarot. Is it? It's that Christian book on the tarot. What's it called? Uh, it, it's like a his his it's like a party trick book. Oh, okay. There's okay. There's there's a there's like a famous like um old book on like interpreting Marseille, but like from like a Christian esoteric lens. Oh, interesting. Um, wait, it might not be. How do you feel about decks that add new cards? Terra of the Silicon Dawn has a 99 card and a zero in each suit, stuff like that. Uh, it's like if it works for the deck, if it works for the deck. Hmm. Meditations on Tarot. What that, would be the worst property yeah, that, to do a licensed Tarot of? I think it might be more recent than... Um, than... What would be the worst property? <laughs> I think a Marvel, I think a Marvel tarot would be oh, really that bad. That 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 a thousand, a thousand percent exists. I don't like House it. Of House of Cards. <laughs> like House doing of House of Cards, cards now. Oh, oh yes. my god. Um. I would unironically buy the Skibbity Toilet yeah, tarot. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say that one has. That legs. sounds fun. The South Park tarot. What's a, what's a, like, extremely disgraced media property? Oh, 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 I have an idea. I have a perfect idea. It's it's immaculate, really. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dan Schneider verse, like, tarot. I, I was gonna say, I was gonna say the, the Bill Cosby tarot. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, ooh, disgraced comedian's tarot. Like... <laughs> like, like alt-right like, comedian tarot? Like, uh... <laughs> fucking... Oh, Lord. <laughs> 
like Louis C.K., Bill Cosby, just put them all up there, really. Right, right. <laughs> the canceled Turo. Yes. Oh my God. Oh, that is stomach churning to think about. We I'm can't put that out in the world. I'm scared of that. I have a question. Oh no. What? What card would Ricky Gervais be? Fuck, that's a good question. <laughs> um, cause, cause, cause Ricky Gervais is an asshole, but he's not like evil. You know, like he's just he's just kind of like a mean and unpleasant person. Um. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like Irofant, maybe? Like he's like very like self righteous in like a. Uh, like I was gonna say like higher with him. Hierophant um, or Hermit, because he also, like, Ricky Gervais just loves collaborating with anyone. Maybe he's like, um, maybe he's like, ooh. There, he's a, maybe he's somewhere in the swords, like one of the court cards mm -hmm. in the swords. Mm -hmm. <laughs> would the devil be an uncancelled person? No, the devil would be somebody crazy chased. Like the the devil would be yeah. like a Mormon stand up comedian or something. Oh my god. Mormons like love stand up, but they can't do it. Um, <laughs> so and and like like their favorite stand up comedians are people like Brian Regan. Like Brian Regan kills in Utah. Like he makes half his career on cruise ships and half of it in Utah. And mm -hmm. like it sucks. He's like not a like He's just a, a huge I mean, hack. Okay. I yeah, I I would love to 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 like view a Brian Regan set and just kind of expose you to like the culture of like what passes as a, as a joke among like Latter Day Saints. Oh my god! Um, like their their favorite their favorite like acts uh, musically are. Uh, well, they can't do David Archuleta anymore because he's gay and uh, left the church. Um, so, like, they've got, like, the Piano Guys, uh, Lindsey Sterling, um, uh, Brian Regan. They're okay with Shen Yun. They can watch, like, some Shen Yun. Oh, Lord. Okay, okay. La last question of the stream. Last question of the stream. For the cancelled Tarot, who is, um, who's Jeff Dunham? Ooh. Um... I would love Jeff Dun Dunham to be the devil because there's that like kind of like chained uh, to oh yeah disturbing uh, yeah, yeah. You know? he has his stupid racist puppets right, like, like, yeah, chained to like, him. Like, like Walter and Ahmed are like chained to him yeah and, yeah <laughs> there you go okay I, I think that's this was a lot of fun everyone I, I want to thank you all for joining me and I, I want to remind you all that. We're doing this to promote uh, my new tarot deck. If you'd like to support it, use command exclamation point tarot, or just like find the link on my blog, which is everywhere. And uh, I want y'all uh, to have a nice night because this was a ton of fun. Thank you very much. Someone and, asked uh, what Queen Dawson would be on the canceled tarot. He's the queen of wands. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Because okay. the queen of wands is associated with cats. Ah, there you go. Okay. Um, I, and also a huge thank you to my co-hosts and a thank you to uh to jame for actually being the one to do all the streaming <laughs> shit of course hey i i love listening to a wizard podcast while i do some stuff it it was wonderful thank you both Wait. for being here let's take a final look at like where our card is right now and then what the notes to say what we've learned oh, yeah yeah let's let's take a, a one last look at our notes and our card and then we can we can kill this I'm, oh, right, right, the notes. I completely forgot we wrote notes for this. <laughs> that looks so cool. Oh, man, yeah, we made... We're going to the space of this. Yeah, we made, like, a scroll this time. It looks like a, like, this is only a joke that the theory cells out there are going to get, but it looks like Tikkun's uh, preliminary materials for the theory of the young girl. <laughs> nice. So Up every, top, buddy. <laughs> a different font, and it's in quotes, and then there's, like paragraphs that like say something really uh profound and technical all right here one last look at the old growth somewhat effeminate <laughs> <laughs> somewhat right. effeminate 
I think I think that'll play us off. I think Good night, that'll everybody. play us off. Chat, oh, thank you so much for being here. Riley and CT, thank you for being here. Thank you to everyone who subscribed and handed bits tonight. That was very kind of you. And thank you to everyone who clicked the link and supported CT's great work. Thank and you. I've got one last surprise for you, chat. This wasn't the only card you'll be seeing tonight. <laughs> Get ready for the world premiere of the second card. <laughs>